Welcome to Whispers and Choco. This is how we do, and if you don't know, now you do. I'm Shawnee Whispers. And I'm Mike Choco. Together we, we are, are Mike and Sean in purebred loco. Oh no, we fucked that up. Okay. Yeah. And we might go loco. And we might go loco. And just in case you wonder what went wrong. Or you just in case you wonder what took long. We'll say that we're sorry. And this, this show, show is going. going. This show is going straight to hell. <laughs> Ah, 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 I like that one, yes! Yeah. Ooh, wow, it's an amazing introduction over and over and over again. This is the Mike and Sean Show. Unfortunately, Sean's not here, he's sick, but it still is the Mike and Sean Show. We know more than you, but even if we don't, we're going to say we do. All right. Thank you, everybody, tuning in right now. My special guest tonight, Stephen. Big Bird. No, I'm just going to add. No, I was going to add nicknames to you, Stephen Pantelidis. It's nice. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for having me, Mike. It's my it. pleasure. Um, Stephen is a comedian, a host, an aspiring rapper, and a huge wrestling fan. One of the biggest. One of the biggest. That's nice. So, uh, tell us where you're from. Uh, Bayside, Queens. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Born in Bayside. Flushing, actually. Ah, oh, and then move to base. Yeah. Right. Step yeah. up. Step up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Flushing the sequel. <laughs> so, who, um, so you were born in Flushing. Your family yeah. picked up and moved into Bayside. Yeah. How long have you been living there? Uh, since '94. '94. Did you go to high school in? Uh, did you go to Bayside High School? No, I never went to high school. <laughs> I oh. always cut. <laughs> oh well. Did you, so you were the you're a dropout. Yeah. It's okay. So am I. Yep. I went back at my GED. I fucked up. Yep. You know. It's a. Uh, it just it didn't feel right. Yeah. You know? No. 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 And definitely was, not. So, but... um, that's okay. There's no judgment here. Uh, I can't. You know. you know what's crazy? I actually became a, a custodian at the same high school that I dropped out of oh, okay. for a little bit. I, I got to clean up my shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was at Bayside High. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You went in one day and you were like, this school sucks. I don't want to come back. <laughs> oh, do you want me to come and clean the toilets? All right, I got this. I can clean yep. shit. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. Well, that's good. So um, how many of you? Do you have any uh, siblings? Yeah, my brother David. Yeah, just, uh, just my older brother David. Just your older brother too? Yeah. I'm an only child. Okay. So awesome. it was it's, uh, it was very jealous of people who had siblings, you mm -hmm. know, boys or girls, whatever. The, and uh, I never it was just only me. I was seeing a, uh, one of the comedians, uh, James Camacho. I don't know if you ever heard of him. I was watching one of his uh, uh, sets earlier, and he was like, he hates the term uh, only child because mm. he's the only child. He's like, it sounds like a bad thing. He goes, how about we just say that we're the chosen ones? The that cho sounds so much better. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of sperm that we left out there and we didn't. We chose not to use. Exactly. We chose to use you. Okay, exactly. say it. The, That's the, a good one, the chosen one. The chosen one, the yeah. chosen one. I, yeah, <laughs> Mike like, <laughs> I was chosen. Now, apparently, my father had two other kids from two other women. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. And I never got to meet him, but one, when he was in the war, was is he, uh, from what I've heard, uh, is a half Korean uh, stepbrother. Oh, wow. A uh, half brother, not stepbrother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another Italian Irish kid somewhere like between Queens and like Florida. So, uh -huh. so there are other men out there with the DNA as another sibling, but no chance of yeah, us yeah, yeah. going. Hey, are you a product of that deadbeat piece of shit guy? That was a, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was me. That, that was, was me that. too. It's like sharing. Uh, uh, no, yeah. so um, okay. So you're from Bayside. How's yep. your family? Uh, yep. Mom. Yep. Uh, my mom. Uh, she's. Uh, wait, you want to like know her ethnicity? Well, or? you know. Yeah. The, well, well, we'll get to that. I'm just saying, like, you know, you have your parents. It's like you recently your your dad just passed yes, away. Yes, correct. And yeah. you were very close with him. One thousand percent. You know. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know. Rest in peace. Thank uh, you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thank you. Because yeah. it is peace. It's like I mean, unfortunately, sometimes there's too much pain here. It's better up there than it is right now in 2021 yeah. over here, man. It's crazy over. And here. And how was like? What kind of relationship did you have with your dad? Uh, very close, man. We were best friends. Uh, too close. Too close? If you know what I mean. Um, Where sometimes he had to draw the line saying, yo, you know, I'm your father at the end of the day. You could talk okay. to me like a friend, but I got to draw that line. Uh, okay. You know, I remember when I was young and uh, uh, I used to bring girls over. This was like in my mid-20s. And yeah, yeah. yeah. If, they were, if they were like, all right looking, he'd be like, oh, hi, how you doing? I'm his father. Nice to meet you. But if they were like extremely beautiful or hot, my father would go, hi, how you doing? 
I'm his older brother. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> That's when he was, I'm not going to be your dad right now. Yeah, I just gotta, yeah, yeah. I'm going to step in and take over here. I have an uh, yeah. understanding that I have game. So yeah. let me just tell oh, you about man, it. He had, uh, they actually say you can't teach game. Like, I actually learned game. He was one of the ones that actually had that, like, natural mojo. Oh, okay. Like, uh, all the women were in love with him, man. You know, Casanova. So, like, one of the girls, uh, we had, were, like, uh, having a party one time, me and my brothers and everything like that, and they met my father. And one of the girls uh, tried breaking into his room when he was sleeping. <laughs> That's how crazy it fucking was. Like, he had triple padlock, and she's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, "I'm gonna yeah, yeah. get no, in." No, he actually there. had like, <laughs> he actually had the triple padlock he, in his he room. He put the extra lock on there so that the girls don't get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that was that. So, yeah, oh, he that's, it. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. You can put, place it on that. Oh, if you cool. Want. Yeah. I didn't even know you had one of these. This yeah. is actually dope. Hold on one second, guys. So uh, this is nice. Well, that's cool. So how did? Oh, so you got into comedy, right? So yeah. what did you do first? When? What did you see? in comedy that made you think that this is what you wanted to do? Well, uh, when I was young, um, I was like obsessed with SNL, okay. Saturday Night Live. Mm, so, shitty show. I'm sorry, but it's just yeah, Oh, now, nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you always think it was shitty? Or? No, I mean, because when I was a kid, I got Eddie Murphy, Bill yeah, yeah, Murray, yeah, yeah. Chevy Chase, and then growing up from, the, you know, and then you pass it on. And then yeah. the next generation, and then I, I would say the next one, but then the Chris Farley and then the Adam Sandler. It's like, it was still good. Everybody that was the one it. that I fell in love with. So that was my generation that I grew up with. Uh, so, you know, watching David Spade, Chris Farley, Adam Sandler, Rob Schneider, you know, even Alec Baldwin, like when they all were performing together, it was fucking amazing, man. You know, so that's when I really fell in love with comedy. And then, you know, then Adam Sandler, he's like one of my biggest idols, you know. Uh, but I never took comedy serious. It was more of hip hop growing up. Okay. And I didn't even want to do that. Like, I was just in seventh grade, and one of my homeboys, uh, Jimmy Eastman, turned around, and he was like, yo, man, hey, we had a substitute teacher in seventh grade, and he turns around, and he goes, hey, man, uh, you want to write a rap? And I'm like, write a rap? I'm like, about what? Like, what the hell? He goes, no, I'm just thinking about it. Me, you, and this guy, Esteban, let's, I'm like, what's the topic? He goes, let's write about uh, bitches and hoes. I'm like, bitches and hoes. <laughs> That's we're... everybody's got a song about yeah, that. Yeah, but I'm like, yo, we're in seventh grade. What the yeah. fuck do I know about that? And I'm a virgin and shit. So I was like, all right, I'll write That's about good... it. That's a good song. Yeah, I'm yeah, a virgin. Yeah. What do I know about it? <laughs> what do I know about bitches and hoes? You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I still wrote it, and uh, I, I gave them the paper, and I didn't even care about it. And then they, uh, Jimmy looked at me and goes, yo, this is actually really good, man. And I was like, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And then I was like, wow. you know. So I reread it, and I showed it to everybody. They're like, yo, this is actually great. And I, I just kept writing and I kept writing, I kept writing, then I actually became obsessed with it. And then that's how I got into music. Okay. And then it went from writing, then it went to rap battles, then it went from me to uh, producing my own stuff. And uh, then it started really escalating. And so hip hop was the first dream yeah. b before comedy even came yeah. in the door. So nice. So when, what's your first memorable hip hop album? Uh, it was called uh, Reality Check. And uh, I, I didn't self-produce it, I was just like, like this is like when SoundCloud like first came out and okay. stuff like that, and you know YouTube. This is like like early, oh late oh eight, early oh nine. Like this is like my first ever like mixtape album, and I remember I just found like these random beats. Like they didn't have no licensing or anything like that, so well I never sold them, so I can't get sued. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's like where I actually got a chance to like explore my creativity. Okay. So the next album that I did, which was called Wake Up Call, I actually self-produced that album my whole entire self. And uh, that actually got really good reviews from all three of my family members. No, <laughs> yeah, like yo, I don't know. Yeah, They're like I don't understand what you're saying, Stephen, but this is awesome. This is pretty good shit. Hey, hey, cheers, man. Cheers. Uh, yeah. Much so, love, uh, you know, growing up, I was exposed to everything like hip hop, rap, uh, rock, and it's different. Like hip hop and rap are really are rapping is that was like the ha the ha you know those like sp and then yeah. hip hop turned and it became in the 80s what like Slick Rick and Eric B and Rakim and Big Daddy Kane and those guys changed it uh, and KRS One they changed the way yeah. the flow is and then when you get to the, between that and the 90s you know we get everything else that you think that you enjoy that's considered old school for us but also for you yeah. but it was like the Wu-Tang you know the Wu-Tang changed everything everything you know, there's good rap, and then the Wu Tang came in and changed everything. So we used to like, oh, as as every we all everybody thought they were a rapper. Everybody did. I thought I was a rapper. <laughs> I was actually pretty good, but not something I focused on. So what I used to do is I would record beats off the radio, just and mix them and put cuts, and mm -hmm. and I would put these like cheap little headphones, and that's how I'd practice walking to when I'm hanging out with my friends and then going home, and I would. 
freestyle in my head. Yeah. So every once in a while, we get into these freestyle battles at school, and I was good, except when I would s slip along the way, I would just be like, uh, and then I wouldn't go back in. I would mm. just be like, yeah, I'm fucked up. I got to go. But <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's awesome. That So what album, what mainstream uh, album did you hear that you were like, and not just a song, but a whole album where you were like, that inspires me to want to do rap or even to make my own. Wow. Uh, well, the first song that inspired me to do rap was uh, my father uh, would collect uh, like actual singles. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, like you can actually buy like a physical single. Yeah. So when I was young, uh, one of the first songs I ever heard uh, was Biggie Smalls Juicy. Oh. Yeah. And I didn't even know it. Like, I just saw like the bad boy logo with the back hat. And uh -huh. like, that was like on the actual single. So. I remember I popped it in uh, my Sony Walkman, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I was listening to it, and I was like, wow, like, this is a great song. And I remember I just had it, like, on repeat the whole entire night, like, to the point where I fell asleep with it. Now, this is going to sound crazy. What that, what that shit out. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, hell yeah, It man. wouldn't play anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I played that shit till the batteries yeah. died, man. <laughs> you know? And, uh, but I remember when I fell asleep and, uh, you know, no cap, but this is, like, one of my earliest memories of dreams and stuff, and I do not know why I had this dream. But in that dream, uh, when I was sleeping, like, because you know when you fall asleep with headphones on, like, you can actually hear it when you're actually in dreamland. Uh, so what I heard is, in my dream, my actual dream was Biggie Smalls, and it sounded like reversed of Juicy, and it was, well, can you save him? Can you save Jesus Christ? I'm like, save Jesus Christ? What do you, what do you? So, like, that was just an actual dream. So I woke up, and I banged on my mom's door, and she goes, why, why are you waking me up for? I said, Biggie Smalls is talking to me, man. He wants me to save Jesus Christ. How am I going to save Jesus Christ? So, so yeah. many people have tried, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, yeah nah, but um, yeah, so uh, after that, uh, that's when I was like, whoa, like maybe maybe that was like a sign for something bigger. I know uh, it sounds crazy, but. No, no And no. I just kept writing. Anything is then, an inspiration. Yeah, you know? then, then that's when 9 11 happened. And then I think the first full album that I heard, like. Uh, from front to back, like me and my homeboy Eric at the time, like we just sat down uh, and we got it on, you know, CD player, and we just did a whole listening session on the boombox, and it was a uh, uh, Eminem's Marshall Mathers LP one. Okay. If you want like a whole full listening session, because I always hear songs, but I wouldn't really buy albums. But that one is different than the stuff that he put out right after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. it's very different. Yeah, like that was a genius album. Very dark, very sinister, very, very creative. Uh, yeah, so. That, that inspired me. And then, uh, you know, then I grew up listening to like a lot of Big L, uh, Big Pun, um, Nas, Jay Z, like, like you know, the, the, the right, right. ones that everyone's growing up in my age, you know? So, you know, I just was listening to them and then I would study them and I'd be like, damn, like the way they put uh, metaphors together, punchlines, uh, the way they told stories and stuff. But, you know, my favorite of all time uh, would be uh, Tupac Shakur. Yes, that's my favorite. He's a poet. Uh, Tupac was a poet. Yeah. You know, um, you, that a lot of people uh, in the in when they're comparing rappers, right? Like they, to say, like sports when they compare genres. Like, do you like sports? Yes. Like, uh, you like baseball? Yes. Okay. Now, when I say I like sports, like you if it's watch on TV, it. I yeah. watch it. <laughs> or if someone gets me a ticket, yeah, I'll go. No, but you would do it on your own. Shit about anything? No. I don't know anything about anything. So man. our logo is the uh, blue and orange, and the home base is basically designed because we're like a sports group, like a sports guys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the Met colors, and so it's also the Knicks, but we'll yeah, just go with the more, Met colors. More, more Mets way. Right. Like start there. And so it was like that's where the home base, and so we would say wherever we are is home base, and that you know. And that's it. And so as sports goes on, it's um, that's what we do. Like that's everything that we were about. It's pretty dope. And so starting, so everything was supposed to be starting with sports, and then you go maybe get an interview and all that. Yeah. And so yeah, so just curious is like you know like because baseball is a when it comes to sports for me. I love mm -hmm. baseball. Okay. I love baseball. Dope. Like played it, uh, and then as an old man, you're playing softball, and it hurts when you do it, but you still go out there and do it, and you pull a few muscles and do it all over again. Now. Um, did you ever, you say, so is there any sport that you played that you were, cause I actually, I'll say this, when you went to the Donda and we'll talk about that in the, yeah. in the minute, the video, there's a video of you trying to throw something to the fans. You know, it is the worst throws <laughs> I have ever seen in my life. Like it's going up and falling yeah, straight yeah, down. Yeah. And I, myself, I'm going fucking throw it over, <laughs> loop it, loop that shit. And it's just going up and going down. And I was like, I just wish I was there to oh, show, give you a good 
flow, but was there any sport that you played, and even if you weren't good at yeah. it, that you just like to play anyway? Uh, growing up, um, I played a lot of basketball. Okay. Uh, I was actually pretty good. Ball handling skills, baby. Yeah, uh, and it wasn't even like like the NBA, obviously, like with the old school NBA, like uh, Michael Jordan, NBA Jam's NBA uh, mm. cast. You know, like Muggsy Bogues, Patrick Ewing. Muggsy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, five foot three. Five foot three, Beast. man. And so, like, th at that moment, I was into basketball for a while, but then I was more obsessed with, like, and one type of basketball. Okay, yeah, that's street ball. Yeah, that's yeah, street, pure ball. street ball. And it was more art to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, the way they did their tricks, the way they did everything like that. So, I, I would, like, literally just try to mimic all the freaking moves. And I don't know, it was like, what was that video game? NBA? I mean, not, was it NBA? No, no, it was uh, and one street ball, some shit like that. Okay. I forgot what it was called, but... Like, I just really loved that video game. And it was, like, on PlayStation 2. And it just really inspired me. Like, Hot Sauce, I think that was, like, one of the M1 yeah, ball players yeah. and stuff. <laughs> like, the way he would do that and bop it on the people's heads and stuff. So I would actually, uh, you know, try to emulate the way they would play basketball. And it actually helped me out a lot. You know, especially, like, for my height and stuff like that. Little guys. Little guys. Little guys. And um, I'll never forget, like, you know, playing basketball. That was the first time my uh, brother broke my nose. Hmm. Yeah. Teach you a lesson. Yeah. Well, so what happened was, is like, we got into like an argument, you know, sibling rivalry and stuff like that. <laughs> and I was wearing his headband and I was practicing moves and we got to like a slight argument because like we were playing and then he threw my basketball in the water. Uh, like there was like a little puddle over there. So I said, oh, you can throw my basketball in the water. So I took his headband off that I was wearing and I threw it in the water and he smiled at me and I smiled him back and then he just, bang, punches me right in the fucking nose and dunks it. <laughs> And it's been curvy like this ever since. Oh, see, <laughs> as an only child, I can only get mad at myself, and I don't punch myself in the face. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. good. There's no, see? there's nobody that's gonna. The chosen one. Yeah, the, the chosen, chosen one, one. The chosen one. The chosen. So sometimes being an only child, I mean, the chosen one is not a bad idea. The after chosen that. sperm. I mean, that's that <laughs> is that's a shirt. That's you put on a t-shirt, huh? The chosen Definitely. sperm. The chosen uh, sperm. There you go. Well, that's cool. So yeah, so hip hop's for love number one, right? That's on the top, and so you know you're. From there, how do you transition to becoming, or even attempting the idea to become a comic? Well, somebody told you you were funny? All my life, like, I've been um, a creative. You know what I'm saying? Like, even in kindergarten, like, I would just draw, like, really wild stuff. I would try to, like, copy, like, Robin Williams pictures and stuff like that. And, you know, as I grew older... Um, what was it like first grade i taught myself the violin yeah and then in third grade i taught myself the trumpet and i was like really obsessed with mozart and beethoven at such a young age i know that's pretty cool right <laughs> that is very cool yeah and then uh then you know our school would have like plays each year and in kindergarten i was like a policeman small like it was like things you want to be when you grow Were you up you the tree at any point no 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 <laughs> but in first grade i was jiminy cricket <laughs> And that okay. was weird, man. That's pretty good. Well, I'm, that's, that that's a weird. step up from tree, so yeah, you're yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. But when I played Jiminy Cricket, and uh, I was in first grade, uh, my mom dressed me up. She gave me the top hat and everything, but the top hat didn't fit. So she had to give me like, um, like a do rag kind of, okay, like just so it would fit. And I'm wearing this underneath uh, the hat. And while I'm performing, when you wish upon a star, in first grade, the hat fell off in front of my whole school, and I kept singing while trying to pick the hat up. And everyone is dying laughing at me, but I just kept singing and I, I, I put the hat back on my head. And then uh, I remember right after that, uh, the music teacher who put the play together came up and she's like, Steven, can you come back on stage? You know, a lot of people would actually get off the stage when they're embarrassed, but you just kept singing and you're gonna make it one day. And I was like, oh, thank you. So like, it was always like, you know, theater or acting or like even something small as like plays growing up. And then that's when music came in. But then when comedy came in, Oh, man. I mean, I was always told I was funny. You know what I'm saying? Uh, That's usually how it is. This is that like yeah. acting or comedy. It's like, wow, you're so funny. You should be an actor. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. so good looking. You should do this. <laughs> Modeling. I, you know, and some most people go out there and they're like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. And they don't. <laughs> and they don't really shouldn't be there. And they're like really good looking people that are really bad actors. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And there's a lot, of, a lot of not funny people, you know. So, you know, what what made you feel that you were funny enough? I was at a, Jesus, I was like 17 years old or 16 or something, and I was at like a house party with a bunch of friends, and it was like everyone was getting lit in the back, everyone's drinking, you know, teenage shit, you know right. what I'm saying? Teenage wasteland, as they say. So we're all getting fucked up, and as we're getting messed up, um, 
They're like, oh, Stephen, I remember you told me that story about you and the uh, uh, the uh, the Brenda story. I was like, the Brenda story. I don't know if I want to tell the Brenda story right now. They're like, what's the Brenda story? And then, I, like, I, I just was answering two people. So I'm telling the story about when I met this woman named Brenda when I was like 15, 16 years old, and the story ended up being everybody in the party listening to it. And it was a party. So you got music, you got everything like that. And I'm in the back talking about when I'm 15 years old, trying to lose my virginity with my boys in Jackson Heights underneath the 7 train. We used to break night. So we used to go underneath the 7 train and just walk around. Then we saw these two women and they were, uh, they got kicked out of the club. And, you know, we're just teenagers. We don't know what the hell we're doing. So we're walking. And then this one girl, her name, she comes up to me. Her name was Brenda. She goes, you're very cute. Uh, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, I'm from Bayside. She goes, do you guys want to hang out after this? We could get a hotel. We could get you guys beers. And we're like, yeah, fuck it. Why not? So they go buy the beers and then we see them buying condoms. So remember, I'm 15 years old and I'm a virgin. So these girls are buying us condoms and beers and stuff like that. So me and all my boys and they buy the hotel. They said, just come in one by one. So me and all my boys go inside the hotel and I'll never forget my boy's older brother drove us to the hotel and I'll never forget right before we got inside that hotel. He said to me, Steven, you're the last one entering that hotel. I said, yeah. He goes, I got one question for you. After they're done sucking your dicks, are you going to suck theirs? So I went, yeah, yeah, so so I I didn't get that though, you know what I mean? So I was like, what What are you talking about? Hi, honey boy. Yeah, so. Hi, lady boy. So I walk in, Uh, I walk in, and as I walk in, like it just kept playing in my head. And so the girls are setting up the beds, and I'm with like five of my boys, and we're all fucking virgin teenagers, you know what I'm saying? So the girls go, all right. We're ready to have sex with you guys, but only two at a time. So I want Steven. And I went, all right. You know, and then. Yeah, I could do this. Yeah, yeah, The yeah. other I'm one not- uh, picked my friend. We called him Akon. He looked exactly like Akon at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was me and Akon. And uh, all my other friends head into the bathroom. And then it's just us two. And I start whispering to him while the girls are setting up the bed and everything like that. And I'm like, yo, dog, I, like. Like, this isn't the way I envisioned to lose my virginity. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, and then so and I want to be in love. He's like, I don't think I want to, I don't think I want to do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah, wanna I, fall, I want to fall in love yeah, with a girl. Yeah, like, I grew up watching a lot Who's of a real 90s, girl. <laughs> a lot of 90s, like, Rocos, romantic right. comedies. You know, She's All That, and uh, whatever the other one was, where he wrote the girl letter. Jennifer Love Hewitt was my biggest crush, by the way. Fucking love him, man. A lot of guys. Yeah, so, not to get off track, but... So me and Akon are there. We're sitting while the girl's setting up. And I'm like, do you really want to do this? He goes, no, I don't want to do this. And I'm like, me neither. I'm like, yo, uh, my boy's older brother, he said right before I left, after they're done sucking your dick, so you can suck theirs. What do you think that meant? He went, what? <laughs> I said, yeah, what do you? He goes, no. You think that these are guys? And I went, nah. And pop- oh, shit, it actually might be. And we're whispering this to each other while the girl's setting up the bed. So I'm like, you want me to try to figure it out? He goes, yeah, yeah, try to figure it out, man. I was like, all right, cool. Just reach in for it. So they get up and they go, so they're done setting up the bed. They set up a bed on the floor. They set up a bed on the actual bed. So I don't know where they go. They come up to me. They go, okay. So Brenda comes up to me. She goes, are you ready for a lifetime experience? And I went, yeah, about that. I was like, yo, can you actually get naked first? Like, I like to see my girls naked. I need to see if you yeah, have Yeah, yeah, and then she goes like this. She goes, okay, no problem. And then she just turns around and she moons me. So I And went, then you look underneath and you can see a little so scrotum. I'm, I'm looking down. I'm trying to look, find a little ball and shit like right. that. Something oh, you know, hanging. All you see is me and my homeboy. We're playing the wall. We're like trying, you got a muffler yeah, down yeah. there. <laughs> We're on our tippy toes trying to look down. And then, they, and then the other one just was, just like moons yeah. us too. They're just mooning us. And then I was like, uh, yeah, can we see more? She goes, no, because we have our periods. And enough's enough. Lights off. So I don't know where she shuts the lights off. It's pitch black. She starts grabbing on me. I'm screaming my fucking ass off. <laughs> my homeboy Akon screaming his ass off. I'm like, yo, find the fucking light. Turn the shit on. So we finally turn it on. And as soon as we turn it on, I'm breathing hard. He's breathing hard. And then we look at each other. Then the first thing I said is, I said, fuck it. I'm going to ask him. And then she kept trying to touch me and I kept fly swatting her. <laughs> and then I Get said, Get your man hands off yeah. me. <laughs> so I look at Akon. I said, I'm going to ask him. Then he goes, all right, fine. So I went, listen. <laughs> I'm like, are you guys? Guys. And you're like, guy guys. And then she went, yes. 
And I went, oh, God, man. And out of nowhere, all you see is all my boys in the bathroom just exit the bathroom like they lost a reality game show. Like, they all look mad, depressed. They, they wanted to see you jump in there? No, like, they, they got sad because they found out they were guys and stuff. Uh, like, they overheard it, I guess. Uh, it's so, like, <laughs> they're all... We're they're all 15 they're years all, old. They're, they're all, all in the bathroom warming up. would have been like, I'm out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right out the window. <laughs> so everyone's getting ready to leave, and the girls are just sad. I mean, whatever you want to call they 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 just sat on the bed. <laughs> Brave women. So as, as they're sitting on the bed... My boy's older brother comes in, and he's our ride. And we're in, like, in the middle of Bumblefuck. So I don't know where he's smiling at me. He goes, listen, I'm not giving anyone a ride here unless Brenda kisses Steven. Oh. <laughs> and there was no Lyfts. There was no Ubers back in the day. And we're talking back in the You know what I'm saying? And you want that. You need that ride. Yeah, home. we needed that I'm ride. I'm walking home. <laughs> and, and, I, and I look at my friend's older brother, and I went, motherfucker. This is going to be a two-day trip home. I'm yep. walking home. <laughs> so out of nowhere... Uh, we, we, uh, I was like, all right, fine. She could give me a kiss, but just on the sideburns, right? So she goes like this. She goes, oh, yes, 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 yes. So she kisses me on the sideburn. I, I scream. That's it. We're getting the fuck out of here. We run out. Everyone is roasting me on the car ride back. And I'll it's never forget. Roastable. Yeah. So on the car ride back, I'm sitting there. They're like, Oh, you're a man gay. How could you get kissed by a transgender? This, that, that, that. I said, first of all, she kissed me on my sideburn. And if I didn't get kissed I'll on the sideburn, sh- I wouldn't be getting you guys the ride home right She's now. She's half half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and once you shave the sideburn, it's no longer a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so after that, uh, what happened was is we, uh, we get in the... Uh, so every, it was just a quiet ride home. They're all roasting me. Oh, Steven, you're mad gay. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And I look at two of my homeboys. I said, wait a minute. On the ride here, didn't one of them, when they were blasting reggaeton, give you a lap dance oh, on the car ride and here? And you must have felt that. You must have felt that. And then sack. I said, and I looked at my other homeboy. I said, didn't she? All, didn't the other one grab your dick? And you were looking at me like, oh, yo, Steven. A handy <laughs> and, and a sack. And you guys were calling me gay? You was well, the, like I was a kiss on the sideboard, man. When you order a Kentucky Fried Chicken, a handy and a sack. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get a six-piece sack? What do you got? What is it? Two of them? Yeah. There's a four-piece. <laughs> so after that... Um, <laughs> four-piece nuggets. So after that, oh. uh, nobody spoke for a couple of weeks. That makes sense. <laughs> Well, the homeboy that got somebody, the lap dance didn't Just in even case come somebody outside. falls in love with the other guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The homeboy didn't even come outside after well, that. I, like, I remember I like I knocked on his window, and he just moved the blinds a little bit and looked at me and closed it back. Like It was a very traumatizing experience for all of them. So I the, just died laughing. I thought it was hilarious. I mean, you could die from it. Yeah, yeah, you could. You could die from it. If they poison your drink or if they... Well, I mean, after you would have had sexual intercourse in the dark. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Could have definitely went left or right. She said, we have a period. You have to put it in the other place. Yeah, but that's fucked up. You know, just be straight up. You know? Yeah, well, that's not... It's it's yeah, about... It's, it's the gotcha. Tricky. It's the gotcha. And so, especially she was older with minors buying them beer. Oh, yeah, she was... Uh, yeah, 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 she, trying to lure them in and everything like that. She, he, he, Yikes. she... Yeah, so that story... Was your jump off to going, huh, maybe I got more, maybe I can use more. That was actually my more. first ever actual comedy story when wow. I was young. And it was like three years after everything happened. And it, like I said, I, I started telling that story in the back to just one of my friends because they begged me to say it to their other friend. Then the whole entire party, by the time I was done, all had their chairs out. They were all listening. Everybody was quiet. They shut the music off. And I was just like in front of like 20 people telling this story. Right. And I was like, and I still didn't think about it. I just let it rock. And then everyone kept saying afterwards, yo, this guy's a comedian. This guy's a funny guy. I thought people were dissing me whenever I would come. Oh, yeah, look at this funny guy, huh? Oh, this guy's a funny guy. He's a clown. If they were Italian, they'd be making fun of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. (laughs) Look at this funny guy, huh? So I was just like, whoop, drop the popcorn. That's right. So after that, I, I still never gave it any thought. But that was the first time I ever performed <laughs> and that was the story that so I that used. was my question what was your first joke uh, that was it <laughs> yeah that was it that was it, which it wasn't a joke it wasn't a joke it, it was wasn't real. a joke it was true and when i reached underneath it to find that full joke it was a sack you want to know the craziest part though <laughs> other than the fact that she had a penis no yeah, <laughs> that's no, not the craziest no, 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 thing no, no, it's fine it's fine but two years later you ran into her again i went to jackson hole in bayside okay uh, is it shut down now all right but two years later after i told that story I was on a date, and she was the waitress. Oh. And it said Brenda on it. 
And I was like, oh shit, bro. I maybe started she laughing. had it. Maybe at this time she had it removed and you could have sex with her. You know what I did though? Right before I, I was on the date, I saw Brenda. I said, listen, look, no bad blood. That kiss was actually pretty good. Can I get another one? No, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> Turns out I like this. I don't know why, but I really like this. <laughs> Holy shit. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Yeah, but isn't that a crazy story though, man? You can't make this shit up. You can't make it up. No, it's too detailed for it to be like. Fake. Yeah, no, 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 The caressing of the sack and all that stuff. That's amazing. Um, so when you start to jump into comedy and venture in and you're figuring out where to go, who do you, I, you took classes, was that it? Like you took, right, like so not comedy classes, but you took like trying to explain the way of how to yeah. go about it. So the way I officially got in, um, I'm like talking popcorn in my mouth. Cheers. <laughs> That's all right. We'll wait. So basically, I did a show, my first ever open mic. Um, my boy Paul suggested it. He was like, um, and my girlfriend at the time, uh, they were like, just try it. You're really funny. We think that you have like uh, opportunity at this. So I was like, all right, whatever. So I found this open mic with Laughing Buddha in like 2016, the beginning of it. And I went on stage and didn't write anything. Just went on stage, just talked my shit, and the response was fucking phenomenal. And I didn't expect that. And I was like, oh, wow, damn, shit, awesome. And I just left it alone. Didn't perform ever again. And then a year later, uh, one of my homegirls, well, we're not cool anymore, but I, I got to give credit what credit's due. She actually told me, she was like, Steven, time's wasting. So at the end of 2017, two years later, it was until I got, to totally. started taking this series. Well, okay. a year and a half later. So... She says to me, she goes, Steven, time's wasting. Because I was unemployed. I was going out partying. I was collecting unemployment. I just got fired from T-Mobile at the time. I wasn't really doing anything. You know what I mean? And she goes, Steven, like, this is your calling. Like, time's wasting. Like, you're very talented. I'm going to get you a ticket to the New York Comedy Club. Go there. Enjoy it. And then see what happens afterwards. And I was like, all right, fuck it, whatever. What I got to lose? So I was YouTubing earlier that day how to make it in comedy. <laughs> but I, yeah, I know, I know, right? This is like <laughs> YouTube will tell you how to build a, a park bench and uh, yeah, yeah, YouTube's a how to make it in comedy, source, and it's the one the most successful comics like. So here's how you make it as a comic. Yeah, don't do what I did, and you'll be successful. Exactly. No, but like the the person that I saw, uh, which was uh, his name was Chris Murphy. He was actually giving a lot of really dope ass advice, and this is like a very old video, but I was just watching it. And I was like, wow, this guy's really good. I'm actually a fan. And then I saw one of his stand-ups, and I actually loved it. So later on that evening, I went to the New York Comedy Club, and I, it was like right by Christmas Eve. So I'm sitting there by myself right in the front, and then the next comic that came out was Chris Murphy. And I had no clue that he He's was the, actually the guy yeah. in the video. So I freaking marked out. I was like, yo! I started, sorry, I didn't mean to scream, but I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like yo! And then and I know where he, he looks at me and goes, hi, how are you? And I'm like, he's like, who the hell is this guy? So he gets off stage and he keeps looking at me. He goes, can you come over real quick? He goes, how do you know me? And I was like, no, no, no. I saw all your stuff on Expert Village. It's really amazing stuff. He goes, wow. He goes, come take a comedy class. And I was like, uh, I don't got the funds for that right now. I'm collecting unemployment right now, but thank you, though. He goes, no, no, no. Come take a free audit. I was like, okay. No hidden nothing. So I went there. They threw me on stage. And that was the most cringe moment of my life. Okay. Uh, it was with him. And then a guy named, uh, uh, also one of my mentors, which is uh, Dave Juskow. They're both just sitting there in an empty. Just staring at you. And go empty ahead, upstairs. Make me laugh, motherfucker. At Broadway Comedy Club. <laughs> and then they went, well, go ahead, talk. And I went, about what? <laughs> so then I was like mad nervous. Like, oh, tell me about your, like, tell me something that you went through. I was like, like the other day? Yeah, something funny that you went through. I was like, I, I can't think of anything. So I was like, all right, well, I was on a date. And this is a very true story, too. I was on a date. And we're driving to back to her place, and there was a truck in front of us, a garbage truck. And the garbage truck accidentally ran over a raccoon. The raccoon went fucking flying in the air, just dropped. So I screamed at her, stop the car. And then she goes, wait, we're right by my crib. I said, I don't give a fuck, stop the car. So I ran out, because I love animals. So I ran out, and I just see the raccoon. You tried to resuscitate the raccoon? No. Look, so I see the <laughs> raccoon, and it's just like this. It just start, it slowly died right in front of me. I couldn't do nothing. I started screaming. I was like, oh my God, I started crying. And, and you know, 
I got very detailed with that story. So I, I forgot I was even on stage. So I'm just looking at Chris and Dave Juskow in the audience looking at me while I'm telling this story. And they're just looking at me like this. Okay. I was like, yeah, I love it. They went, did you at least get laid after? I think it would be the most important question. Not yeah. whether this raccoon did lived or died. Did you go back to the girl's crib? <laughs> I was like, no, we went back, but I was too emotional. I was crying all I night. I can't have sex with you. That raccoon is a hurt. It the just raccoon hurts. died. I can't. <laughs> It was my first Ace Ventura moment. She she so, starts touching him and caressing yeah. him, and he's like, raccoon. So I'm, I'm freaking out over the raccoon being dead, and then uh, she's consoling me. The next morning, I call up my mom, and then she's like, honey, what's wrong? Like, you posted a sad post. I was like, well, my raccoon died. And then, I mean, my <laughs> raccoon died. I felt like it was my raccoon. So then she's like, what, what do you mean the raccoon died? I was like, well, I saw this raccoon get hit by an 18-wheeler. I was behind. I was on a date, and I was crying. So she's like, oh, my God, you have such a great heart, son. Like, my mom's like one of those, like, uh, uh, you do everything correct. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love you, son. Here's your praises, which is oh, awesome. You didn't mean to murder anyone. Yeah. You're better. You're better than that. <laughs> it's okay. Let it go. Oh, my son God. is a good son. It doesn't matter that he <laughs> was arrested 16 times for armed robbery. He's a good yep. boy. But she, she does tell me when I'm wrong. <laughs> but whenever I do something nice, she praises it like uh, over a mat. But when I do something wrong, mm. when you do something right, it's like ah. she. My mom turns hood as fuck when I do something uh. wrong. She goes, "Listen, fucko, make it right right now." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she calls me fucko. So wow, she calls you fucko. Yeah, fucko. Oh wow. Yeah, my dad called me that too. I, I don't know. Did anyone ever call you fucko? No. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Start calling people fucko from now on. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't even know what the worst name I was ever called by my parents. So. Yeah. It was probably like by a name by another child. <laughs> yeah. My father would call me bitch, but the way he said bitch was fucking hilarious. He'd be like, "Bitch, get the fuck away from me!" But it was like hilarious, bitch, like a quick, like yeah, a the, quick the pinch, quick pinch, bitch, bitch. bitch. Yeah. I think it was like my mother would just say Michael, and the way she would say that, I'd be like, "Oh, that's I'm in, uh, uh, I'm dead." I'm dead. <laughs> I'm gonna die, Michael. Like this is a white woman, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Calling her son. You're like, I don't want to fucking hear it anymore. <laughs> and I stormed in there one day, and I was like, listen, I'm tired of being afraid of you calling me Michael. I said, my name is Mike. My friends call me Mike. And she looked at me, and she said, I'm your mother. I gave you your name. It's Michael. Now get the fuck out of here. And Gangster. I was like, and I was like, I'm never gonna. I'm never going to go by Mike ever again. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I didn't. <laughs> when I signed my name, Mike, I got scared when I was signing it. I was like, <laughs> he, I signed, a, he signed it to look up. Yeah, over yeah, my yeah, shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Like, where's that crazy little four foot ten white woman? <laughs> See, now I just go by bitch and fuck over. Okay. Now. <laughs> I mean, I would appreciate that. If my mother was like, hey, bitch, go do the dishes, I would like, I would have something promising uh, yeah, to work with. But yeah, all exactly. I had was, you know, I had a Caucasian mom who was super white, and all she could say was Michael. And that was just enough, like, murder. Like, it was death row when she said my name. Okay, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so uh, finishing the story now uh, with the raccoon story. So I'm on stage, uh, and I, I told the whole story. And you killed it. <laughs> no, fuck no, that. That was the worst the, one I ever did in my life. I was just talking. Was, but the, the part was, is after I told my mother that story, she goes, Stephen, you're a hero. And then my brother said, so my brother over the conversation, he goes, he ain't no fucking hero. And I'm like, Dude, I couldn't do it. He goes, nah, you could have done something. You could have saved that raccoon's life. I said, what could I have done, dude? The thing's dying. It was raining. He goes, you didn't think of giving it mouth to mouth? I was like, give the raccoon mouth to mouth? So when I said that, Chris Murphy and Dave Juskow started laughing on stage. And I went, this is horrible in my head. I was like, so I got off the stage and I said, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I'm gone. And then they went, no, that was actually pretty. We can work on that. I was like, really? He goes, come back next week. I was like, I can't. I don't got no money like he goes dude i'm gonna make you a deal right now in seven weeks i want you to perform here at the broadway comedy club we're gonna pack it out it's gonna be fucking amazing i was like okay cool i'll see you in seven weeks he goes no i'm gonna see you next week because the whole entire seven week course is on me man and i went wow he gave me the whole thing for free oh wow that's yeah. pretty cool so uh that, chris that murphy. was pretty dope yeah chris murphy so, a little yeah and and they just got they, they were both and Dave yeah, those, were, those were my mentors man nice. so we did it and then since then he, uh, he, the way he trained me, the way he helped me organize my jokes, man. Like he taught me so much that I never knew. And we, we did the Broadway. Then afterwards, we killed it. The audience was amazing. It was a phenomenal. Keeps coming back to killing it. It's the, the whole raccoon story all over again. <laughs> so I killed it, and then and then I killed Just it. Just like the raccoon. And then I killed it. <laughs> and then after that, uh, I got pussy. I killed it. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, let's ask her. <laughs> no, I didn't even murder that yeah. person at all. Only the raccoon you, died. You knocked the on that one. Was not yeah. murdered at all. <laughs> nah, but, uh, so then since then, that's when I did the New York Comedy Club right afterwards. Like He put me on, and then everything started going great. Then mm -hmm. I met a guy named Craig Fox, and the comedy thing the whole entire year was just really taking off. And then I think right before the pandemic, uh, Craig Fox mentioned to me to a guy named Gary Garcia, and then they had me as a special guest at Atlantic City Tropicana in oh, 2020. Very nice. Yeah, at AC Jokes. Shout out to them. And right after I performed for them, that's when the pandemic hit and everything just shut the fuck just down. Shut down. Start all so over. that 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 was crazy, man. That that was. Oof. So pandemic, you tried to um, do some old like Zoom comedy. Did, were you one of the comedies comedians trying to do Zoom comedy? Yeah, I was very against it at first. You know, because uh, I feel like since the pandemic, and not to be on some cocky shit, but like I've been doing this for like five, four, four to five years. Well, four years at that time. Now I'm almost at six. You know, um, but I just feel like ever since the pandemic started, I get it. Everyone's isolated. Everyone's good. I'm never going to knock anybody chasing their dreams. It, it, you could try anything. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Shit, if you told me tomorrow, like, hey, I want to be a porn star. Hey, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Well, not let's do it. Well, you I, know, did, I did. I did. There was that <laughs> like, one time. I'll support you, though. <laughs> there was that one time I did think about it as a teenager, and I was like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was like, I wanted to do movies. Yeah. But it seemed that, like, Hollywood was so far away, but, like, sex wasn't. I yeah. was like, huh, you know what? I, I, yeah. I could do this. I called them up, and I was like, you know, how do you go about auditioning? And they were like, for females, you show up, you fill out the paperwork, and then you go through these auditions are like for males mm -hmm. you have to give them you give them your account and whatever the billing is and for everything that you do they you they bill you and then if you're good enough they pay you later they hire to pay you later mm -hmm. so you have to pay them to have sex with the girls in the audition before they can pay you and i was like ah, i don't even have any money that's why i'm trying to do it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you and know then, and then like uh so so you actually did almost get, get into it? No, I just, it was all on the phone. This oh, okay, was like, okay, okay, this okay. is all, it was like a stupid thing. A buddy of my, uh, and I were like, well, what do you, I was like, yeah, look on the back of it. And it says, hey, do you want to do adult movies? Hey, call this number. And when I was like, you want my credit card? I was like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> well, there's the scam. That's <laughs> where you get fucked. That's yep. right at that moment. You get yep. fucked. Okay. Uh, man, I, uh, uh, not to get off sidetrack, but that reminds me of. Uh, well, that's what we do here. We all have ADHD. Oh, I love it, man. We have like me. One time, I almost. Uh, Sean could be telling you about hot air balloons in thirty seconds. So I mean, you, you, you guys. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that's it. Like you know, I'm, I'm a very weird person to talk to, but you guys watch porn. I'm assuming, right? You guys watch porn. You guys watch it? Yeah, no? yeah I mean, who does it? Like, if you've ever watched it when you had to pay for it, yeah. when you don't have to pay for it, it's just like a. T it's it's. No, nobody's admitting to like. Nobody says, "Hey, you all remember I do." We had a couch. We had a casting couch. We used to film casting couches here. Porn. Shit, casting bring that couch. shit back. I'll be right over here in a second. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> different show. Different oh, show. Shit. That's different hilarious, show. Man. So okay. So, no wonder these seats are sticky. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get my feet off the floor. <laughs> so so here you are, and now you're in the you're in the free world of porn. <laughs> no. Yeah. 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 No, but like, uh, like since the pandemic, not to get like sidetracked and anything like that. Again, but this is what we do. So. Yeah, but like, uh, like I, I felt like once the pandemic hit, everybody and their mother thought they could become a comedian. I think still, I think it like they were talking. Yeah. I was listening to. Like, uh, some... I never seen the amount of, like, once everything started like opening back up. How everybody? I know why. I can tell you why. It's crazy. Being home and doing the social media and writing stuff and the Instagram and everything, and you write a funny comment and people go, "LOL, ha ha ha, LMAO." Yeah. That's so funny. That's great. The more you hear that, the more you're like, "Huh." I know what I'm gonna do when this opens up. Yep. I'm gonna be a comic. Exactly. I'm gonna do comedy, which is not with the way that I wanted to do it. I've always wanted to do it. No, no, no. But you, you, you uh, you're an actor. You're already in the entertainment. Well, that's field. what you happened what was I got and, into that first. Yeah, you're already a creator. I'm talking about like people that like were just working like a nine to five. Then they got bored, and, and then they were like, oh, you know what? I'll just do comedy now. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like when that, I would, when that's I was kind of disrespectful to the actual comedy world. When I was younger, I was like, that's what I thought I was gonna do. It was like you find a mic and do it. Find it. Man, I'm so nervous and so scared because the first audition I went on was. Um, uh, was a sketch comedy mm -hmm. and I was so scared I was like I didn't know how to control that yeah. and then I, I didn't even go in and then fast forward um, uh, like 10-15 years later I thought about it again I got so scared in the audition I was like I can't do it I get to a friend who's do doing the acting and I was helping him and I understood characters 
And I was like, I like the serious part of it, but I'm always making jokes. I'm always having fun, always laughing. Then, as you hear people say, like, you know, why don't you try doing comedy? And I was like, oh, no, I want to be taken seriously. And then somewhere down the line, I was like, I would do it, like, you know, make a joke here and talk to people that were doing comedy. And then at the end, it was like, we get to the pandemic. And I was like, because this is what you were saying about yeah. during the pandemic, they're like, I think I'm funny. I was like, no. I said, I have one shot at anything that I do. You don't get two shots or three shots or four. You either get in it or you don't. Exactly. And so I was like, when the doors open up and we get to July, I'm going to do fucking stand up. And if I suck at it, so what? I have no problem with it. As long as I go and I did and I tried it. Yeah. Because I've wanted to do it for 20 years. Exactly. You know, and then I went in there and I did it. And um, it wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> you still had the balls to get on fucking. Uh, if there's one thing you I could have just said, the... Steve, that it was funny and it was maybe not, you know, no, it's okay. It's no, a joke. I, I see. It wasn't stuff. funny. I, if it I wasn't, wasn't a fan of your stuff, I wouldn't be working with you, man. And I think you're fucking phenomenal, dog. I'm telling you, man. See, I you, love now it. you're also a host, a wrestling fan, and a motivational speaker. Exactly. <laughs> So I have a bridge it. for sale, and uh, you should take it. The wish version of Tony Robbins. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very light Robbins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, but like, uh, like yeah, you're saying so, that you said the observation of like the people wanting to do comedy and all the like so many. I, I was with it, like, 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 like I said, I'm all for people chasing their dreams. Right. But now I'm more selective with who I decide to work with. You know what I'm saying? Because once I like, it, it was crazy big because like, like comedy was illegal for a little bit. You know what I mean? Like. You weren't allowed to perform indoors. Like, if, if they saw it, they would arrest you. So what can we do at that moment? And that's when comedians started, you know, getting their mics and getting their speakers and doing, like, Washington Square Park. Yeah. So I remember I, the first time I went to Washington Square Park, I see all these comedians in a circle. I thought it was an audience. And I see one comedian performing. And like, damn, this audience sucks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no that's what I said. Yeah, they're like, they're like, none of them are paying attention to the yeah. comedian that's actually performing. So I thought it was an actual audience. So I'm like, damn, do I gotta actually go next? Because I signed up for the open mic. So I'm, I'm on. All I'm doing is looking around. And I guess you could say I was spoiled because, like, when I got in, I was automatically doing like New York Comedy Club, West Side Comedy Club. I know so name dropping right so now. So you're right, but, but it's I'm okay. Used to name it, drop, go for I'm it. I'm used to. I was used to it right away because of the blessing from Chris Murphy. So, doing Broadway, doing Comedy Cellar, uh, doing West Side, I was always used to a crowd. You know, I never had that, like, open mic feel until before, in 2015 when I did it. So, I never knew what it was like to actually be at an open mic. Okay. So, now that I'm here, post-pandemic, and I'm around striving comics, and my job is to try and make them a laugh, I, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I was on stage. I, just, I, I was on stage. I was on the fucking park next to squirrels. But like, <laughs> squirrels were like. <laughs> the squirrels gave me more of a response than the fucking open mic comedians. Throwing man. nuts at you. Yeah, there. man. So, so I remember I was performing, and as I'm performing, people were on their phone. They were having conversations with each other. And Is I was it just bothering like, you? It, it a little bit irritable? Of course, yeah. one thousand percent, man. I can imagine because you're like, wor like, you're working like, on that what is you. That's so disrespectful. I like 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 to any comedian at all, whether it's a show, whether it's anything like that. I get if you got to check your phone one time, but if you're gonna sit there right. and go, I'm listening. Uh, 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 see, give me the same response. No, that's 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 what? What was this I'm guy? Joking. What was this guy? You, this guy trying to make a joke over here? Huh? No, 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 I'm totally joking, man. I'm totally joking. Ah. <laughs> Oh, I spilled it on it's me. It's all good, man. It's, it. it's graffiti. It's graffiti. It's graffiti. <laughs> well, it's now it's all no, over no, no, me no. and the floor. It's all cool, man. All no, right. but like, uh, like I was saying, was that like with? I I just feel like when, when a comedian's performing, whether it's an open mic, whether it's full audience members, if you're gonna go over your notes, go over it in private. Go go somewhere away from the stage because if. An audience member actually does pass by, and they see people on their phone. They see people talk with each other, and the host. Like that's why a lot of people respect me as a host, also as well. Because when I'm hosting, right. I'm sitting right next to the comedian, literally like a correctional officer. Gotcha. I'm not gonna walk away from them. I'm not doing anything like that. I sit down. I analyze them. I do everything like that because when people see me doing that, it'll help themselves want to respect the comedian also as well. Well, hopefully, right? Because like you know, that's I mean, what some it's still all about. don't do it, and you know what? The people that do do that, I see it. And then you know what? I don't fuck with them. Because you know why? 
I remember when you came to any of all my shows and everything like that, when I was hosting at Joey Bats, yes. you were always sitting, you were always attentive, you were always respectful, you were laughing, you would tell me which ones you thought were good. That shows me passion. You know what I'm saying, man? Yeah, because like, look, I, well, I think that even if I suck at it, right? New York confirms five cases. Of, of course they well, do. Of course they do. Of course they fight for more Omicron. And if you look at Fox News, everybody's Man. like, Amicron, Aminonicron, whatever the... It's the Delta Vagina. It's Maricon. It's Maricon. Oh, the Maricon. <laughs> Maricon. You know, that's what my grandma used to call me growing up. Uh, yeah, my Chilean grandma. I, and, and I'll never forget, she was like a wrestling head. And uh, every time I see her, she only knew Spanish, my Chilean grandma. And when I was sitting next to her, I was a kid. I'd be like, Grandma, I love you. And she'd be like, ugh, maricon. And I didn't know what maricon meant. So I asked my mom that. <laughs> my mom freaked out. She's like, said, Mom, why does Nana keep calling me maricon? She goes, so what does that mean? She goes, uh, it means I love you. She didn't know how to respond. I said, it does? So next time I saw her, she's like, ugh, maricon. I said, I know, me too. Me too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. And you're like, she's like, yeah, you waste yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't think you, you were into a, uh, Oh, that's great. Yeah, but the thing with the Joey Bats was, uh, which I which I like because it was so open. And yeah, there were I, a lot I love of, Joey Bats. There He's was a such of, a gentleman. Man. There's a lot of tourists there, too. Yeah. So you can just get random people. Yeah. Now, I said to him, which is funny because when you're standing there and I go, uh, there was a young Italian girl and she was doing a joke about an Italian grandpa with a thick Italian accent. And I said, I wanted to try this joke about uh, an Italian great uncle I had who was so dramatic. When he speak, he said, last the night, I almost died, right? <laughs> and I did like, and when I started to do it, yo, know, this girl looked at me with like, she was looking through me, like she was trying to stab me with something. And when I got off and I was done, she just went like this. She looked at her boyfriend and she was like, bullshit. And I was like, <laughs> she didn't even clap, at least clap. It could be bullshit. But she felt that it was bullshit because I used an Italian accent too. And I was like, that's okay. Like yeah. you understand that those open mics, those people, even if it's funny, they don't. Nobody wants to. Nobody really wants to laugh, you know. Like they're analyzing you, they're judging you. They're like they're judging your jokes to go like, I could do that better, you know. There was yeah, um, they, they, you know what it is, and this is the thing I hate, and this is what Chris Murphy warned me about when I first got in the game. He told me, he said, Stephen, when you get in here, be careful. Be careful who you connect with. Be careful who you talk to. Be very selective because in the comedy world, not only is it cutthroat. And he didn't say crabs in a barrel. He used it a little different. He said crabs in a bucket. Crabs in a bucket. So because the barrel be bigger. And yeah, exactly. Smaller. So so when he said, you ever heard the term crabs in a barrel, crabs in a bucket? When you you they all try to call on each other, try mm -hmm. to get up. Like me, I legit have a passion for comedy, I, and that's why I love it. But when I say the amount of comedians that I met, and I'm not gonna name drop any of them because I respect the game, but I've gotten shit talked about me, I got in backstabbed, I got in cutthroated, I got people that try to blackball me. And like it's insanity, man. And and you were there for one of the comedians that laid fucking hands on me. Yeah. If you want to talk about it, we could talk about it. I mean, we we'll, we can get. I got a question for you, Mike. Would you take a a little terramana? No. No. Okay. Well. Right here, we got a little Terramana. He said, man, you just dropped that shit all over your legs. You think I'm going to take a shot? No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I dried it. I dry, I rinsed it out. It's in there. <laughs> Holy shit. I'll all take right. one with you, Little Mike. Terramana. It's the rocks. It's, it's the rocks. I did it for the rock. And I <laughs> do this for the rock. Anyway. All right. Cheers, man. You don't have to I take love you, my brother. Time. Thank you. Thank right. you. Love thank you. Too. Cheers. Salute. Mm. Mm. Wait, is this mixed with anything? I'm a hypochondria. It's just ice. Awesome. Take it. What do you think? Look at that, huh? Look at that, Terramana. Yeah, just put it in your mouth. You'll be all right. <laughs> now I'm getting a phone call. Hey, are you on that show yet? Yeah, I'm on it right now while I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah, so let's go. All right. Oh, so, yeah, so I, I thought it was interesting is that, um, uh, what, what was, there was this one joke, uh, comedian, um, uh, that kid, the kid Josh, right? And he was telling this joke, and it was um, it's about his girlfriend being 14 years younger than him. Mm -hmm. And he goes, but funny, when I was telling her when I was whatever age, she goes, no, I didn't I didn't really look at that she was 14. And so nobody would clap, right? Mm -hmm. And so I went, <laughs> and he was like, give it up for the pedophile. And they went, ha, 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 ha. And then he walks over, and he was like, thanks for clapping. At that. Aww, it was yeah, just, Josh is a sweetheart, yeah, man. I love But Josh. it was like, it was one of those moments. It needed somebody yeah, to yeah, clap. Yeah. And if you don't have quick instincts, you'd be like, You'll let him die. Just let him die. And I was like, no, I don't even know him, but I was like, I'm not going to let him die. Give him a clap. 
Give it up for the pedophile. Oh, yeah, and so I think that like, well, which is hard. It's like I think I think acting, depending on where you are, it's a very cutthroat business. When you're in New York and you're in a, in LA, it's everybody's trying to do the same thing you're doing. Mm -hmm. So they're pushing you out. They're bad mouthing you. They're talking you down. You go to Atlanta. You go to Texas. They're like, come on, let's all work together. Comedy, which I was aware of by listening and watching comedians and watching their interviews, old interviews that they put up. Mm -hmm. Richard Pryor is by Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy should be everybody's inspiration. Yeah. You yeah. know, Eddie Murphy has skits that like people still, if you can remember them, people still bits where they were like, it's just, it's amazing. Like the, what he did with the honeymooners. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Come here, nothing. Like I didn't even watch a... a I, I'll be honest with you. I'm one of those comedians that comedians get mad at. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, what? You don't know this comedian? You don't know that comedian? Like I said, I grew up watching SNL, uh, Dave Chappelle. And um, those names are the people that you Yeah, know. and George Carlin. Like, 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 like I, I, didn't even, I couldn't really watch stand-up comedy growing up because my parents had a cable box and that was it. And my grandma and my aunt was the ones with the HBO. And the Cinemax. So you can't. You had to go over there. So it was either when I, whenever I would spend the night at my grandma's house and when she went to bed, hey, it was either comedy or softcore porn, and I enjoyed both. <laughs> <laughs> you going over to grandma? Uh, can I get that extra blanket no, and that, that and that towel? You, you know that towel that's always God bless my grandma's soul. So I have a Chilean grandma, and I had a, a, a yeah, maricon. A, yeah, the maricon <laughs> one, and then I had the uh, uh, the um. The Greek one. Uh, the and Greek. The Greek, ah, yeah. And she was like, they were both off the boat. So it's like, they, they their English was very limited. And I'll never forget, my, my, my Chilean grandma will call me maricon. My Greek grandma will call me kakobedi, which is bad boy. So I'll, Bad boy maricon. <laughs> see, the thing is, is though, when, when I was young and I used to watch the softcore porn, I didn't know what jerking off was. Mm. So I would just actually just sit there and watch the soft court porn and just look, wow, this is great. It's 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 and sex. I'll it's never sex, forget man. she busted in the door and she had the belt. And she goes, Got go Betty And I'm like, What? I changed the channel, right? So fucking Ren and Stimpy. Which I think it was worse than it was the, the same thing. Porn. It was the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was, was actually same, worse than the soft core porn. Just, one was just eat more evil, that's all. Yeah. Like you try to switch it to something innocent as running stimpy, then it's a zoom in on an ass with band-aids on it and a pimple. And she was like, You're looking at the <laughs> ass, you bad boy, you. So she starts hitting me with fucking. You bad boy. Benny, He's like, Benny. Hey, I didn't do it. I'm yeah. not touching myself, Grandma. I'll never forget my dad told me one of the funniest stories. So this is why, uh, God rest my dad's soul, but I just want to share one story if that's cool. Yeah. So uh, This is your time, man. Yeah, 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 and loving memory of my father. But uh, my father, uh, I'll never forget, speaking of my grandma, so like I said, my grandma, like Greek words are very weird. You know what I'm saying? Do you guys like lentil soup? You ever had lentil soup? Yeah. It's lentil soup, right? Yeah. So my dad brings his friends over one night. He could record this part. Go ahead. Yeah, you got it? Awesome. So uh, my dad brings his friends over one night, and he's like, Steven, he's telling me this story. He's like, I bring my friends over, and now I'm in the voice of my dad right now. He goes, I bring my friends over, and, you know, your yaya was cooking. And, you know, do you know how to say lentil soup in Greek? And I was like, no. He goes, it's called faki. I was like, okay, it's called faki. All right, cool. He goes, yeah. So my friends are over, and then yaya comes out, and she goes, ah. You guys want fucky? You guys want fucky? And then he said his he said his <laughs> he said his friends went, whoa, what the hell? Cause a little old lady coming up, they go, yo, get your mother away from me. Yeah, tell, tell grandma it's not it's not my thing. It's not my thing. Wait till I'm fifty, it's a thing. <laughs> I just wanted to share that yeah, story. That's, that's, I think that was hilarious. That's man. funny because they were like, "What did she just say?" She goes, "Ah," hey, and she's man. smiling too. Yep. Hey, do you, you want fucky? Yeah. You want fucky? You want Come on, Holy come shit. on. That shit so, was fucking hilarious, man. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. For, that is. Uh, yeah, cheers mean, to my pops, real quick, man. Go. Audi, I know you're here, man. Uh, Salud. Man, cheers. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it, though. Yeah. So, yeah, so move on. Yeah. you get it. You go. You go into comedy, right? Yep. Now you're friends. Now you're friend squad, right? Mm -hmm. How do your friends feel about it? Like, not just like they, they think you were funny because of funny stories. How do your friends feel about you when you hit, they know that you tell them, hey, I'm doing comedy now. Come see me do comedy. I'll be honest with you. At, at first, everybody was with it. Man, when I first did my first show at Safari Beach Club in, uh, in uh, Bayside. Oh, it's so awful. We packed it off like with 100 people plus that just came through. 
Friends and friends and friends. Friends, family, everyone came through because everyone was like, wow, Steven's actually doing comedy. They wanted to see what I had. Mm. And, and I'll never forget that day I, I went on stage. I brought my father on stage. It was fun. It was hilarious. It was great. Then when I got off, then I, I started doing shows all over the city. But one thing I noticed, the more I got serious with it, the less people started showing up. Uh. But more strangers started showing up, if that makes any logical sense. Well, it does. You the know. more I got serious the less my friends started showing up. When I say friends, I mean like acquaintances. You know what I'm saying? Like, Well, people that you thought were friends, and then it turns no, no, out they're not. No, no, still friends, but it, they just didn't show up as often. Friendly or friends? No, no, like people from my town. People from, like, 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 they're like, oh shit, Steve was doing comedy? And then I know where they went to one, two shows, then they went. But then strangers started showing up. And then everyone's like, oh, um, now that you're taking comedy serious, how do you feel that people aren't supporting you? I said, it's, see, that's the idea, and this is what Uncle Billy taught me. Performing for, this is what Uncle Billy said to me. Performing for your friends and your family is cool, but if you could go to somewhere, the job is not to get their approval. The job is to get fucking strangers to fall in love with you, because that's going to be your fan base. Your friends and family are always going to be there. Your job is to prove to the world and have them fall in love with you. Because anyone can perform for their friends and family. But if you could go up in front of 50 strangers and your job is to make them laugh for 10 minutes straight and you can do it, then you're made for this business. I said, damn, that's crazy. You know? So I took that. And then I just threw myself to the to the wolves, as they say. I started performing. I started doing it like that. And I ain't gonna lie, man. Like, I had so many cringe moments too, man. Like, a lot of people... I, I used to think the worst thing in life was bombing on stage. So, okay, well, w w to add to it, so, yeah, like, go you're, you're going on stage, when you say, like, even if you bomb on stage, or, or at least you think you bomb on stage, okay. right? But let's just say, like, you go on stage, whether you're good or the joke isn't hitting perfectly because it depends on who's there. Now your friends and your, your friends are there. Yes. Right? So when you get off and you run into your friends, what is their response to your jokes? What is your response to your... My close friends? Yeah. The, your oh, man. Uh, they hug me. To say you did fucking amazing, a um, lot of gratitude. My real friends, those, those are them. Uh, friends, like I see, like, hey, what's up, man? You know what I mean? Same thing. Then you got some people, oh, this guy thinks he's funny. Well, do you think that you're going to find people, that, yes, that'll say that, that are probably like jealous that it's not them? Yes, 1000%. You know, they're like, oh, 1, you're a comic? Oh, I want to see you yeah. do comedy. Then you, they see you do comedy and you might be pretty good and you're like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Man. It, when I first started not, doing not, it, it was, I'll never forget, there was this one person I would always see on Bell. I'm not gonna say no names, but I'll never forget when I first saw Do him. Do you want to whisper the name so I can say No, 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 no. I don't mention names. <laughs> nah, but, um, I'll, only, <laughs> I'll only mention names as if it's in a positive light. You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, I'll never forget I won't. This. I'll, give, I'll throw that shit out there if it needs well, to be. Once I get, once I get uh, yay money... Uh, once I'm a billionaire, I'll talk all much shit as I want. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They'll sue you for slander. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, but like I remember there's one guy. Right. Uh, I went up there and then, uh, he was introducing me to some people and he was like, "Oh, look at this guy. He thinks he's funny." And then it went from he thinks he's funny. Then three weeks later, oh, this guy, he's actually cool. Introducing me to somebody else. Then now, a couple years later, oh, this is my friend. He's a comedian. Oh, so now we're he's friends. funny as fuck. Uh. So like that Jay Z line, when you first come in the game, they try to play you. Then you drop a couple of hips, look how they wave to you. Simple as that. Whenever you try to do something different, whenever you try to chase a dream, everybody's gonna try to say, "Oh, look at this guy trying to do something different. Look at him trying to." Do it. Then when you actually start doing it, and you're actually serious. I like that quote. Then everything though. switches up, man. Well, yeah. When I got into acting, I was like, I have a couple of friends that were like, they said like, "Oh, when you get into acting," I was thinking like, eh, "All right, he's gonna be an actor, okay." And then when whenever I was done and I put out this little these little projects, and they looked at it and they were like, mm. "Oh shit!" Like, "Yo, dude, I gotta say it was like it was pretty good." And I'm not yeah. again touting myself or pat myself on the back, but it was like I worked hard on these little projects to do the smallest thing possible that was available to put it out there. And for somebody to be like, "Yeah, oh yeah,", yeah. like I thought like you're gonna be an actor. It was like, "Fuck you," you know what I mean? Like the last thing you want to hear is somebody give you a nonchalant half-ass fucking all right you're gonna do it and then when you do it and you're good at then support you support me right fucking exactly. away man exactly. don't give me that shit i like you guys yeah. seen them the, the um i keep saying dave Chappelle. Well, i got dave Chappelle. uh kevin hart that um true story 
No, I haven't watched it yet. Oh, the one on uh, Netflix? I do. Yeah, it's Wesley crazy, Stein. man. You seen it? watch it? Yeah. yeah. I haven't watched it yet. That, I, I like the, the opening, the open, his opening uh, speech. Okay. Oh, the opening monologue? Yeah. Stuff? yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awesome. really nice. It was really beautiful. It was like straight yeah. to the T. Yep. Okay. So, so I look I look forward to that. Uh, this yeah. weekend coming up, I'll watch that. You no know, th- but that's the thing. Here's a guy, look, look at Kevin. I know everybody like, Dave Chappelle is the com- a comic right now. Which is funny because I'll tell you what, when you go back to the shows, the comedy shows that I had, like Apollo Comedy Hour, Def Jam Comedy Hour, when you see Dave Chappelle, Chappelle when he was first fucking coming out here, let me tell you something. When he was that skinny guy and he was putting a hat on, yeah, he crack was like, Dave. Crack it, Dave! And, like, and doing all that shit. I ain't scared, you yeah, motherfucker! Yeah. Like, and he was doing that comedy. You just saw a funny guy doing physical funny shit to make people laugh. Some comics say, if you curse, you're lazy. Some people will say that if you do all that physical and like in the middle of it, then you don't have jokes. He transformed himself because if you look at his the first 10 years of Dave Chappelle, it's nowhere close to the guy that you see now and go, wow, he's intelligent. Yeah. Uh, Nothing uh, evolution. Close. Evolution. Evolution. But Same thing with me. You have to do dumb shit to get people to laugh, to get the world to respect you as for a craft. Like Will, will Ferrell will... Physically run around naked and not care what he looks like naked in a comedy and people will laugh and his lines will be flat and dead and then you'll be like and then he'll do a character and people will laugh but he's not telling jokes he's a physical character the Chris Farley's and like that but Dave Chappelle's transformation from what he was to me to 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 do it is and wear it his fucking hat when he came out there and people laughed at that yeah. shit but Def, Jeff Def Jam comedy put out some of the best things that I in memory and one of them was this female comic she's a big woman right big breasted sister and she came out and she was telling a story and while she was telling the story she pulls out an ashtray she pulls out a cigarette from a bra <laughs> she pulls out the lighter and she starts lighting a cigarette then she pulls out a glass she pulls out the bottle that she's gonna drink and is licking she's a big woman yeah. and then she pulls out a bag with ice cubes and that was her whole fucking thing. Whatever her jokes were after that, nobody's going to remember it. Because they're going to remember that that woman walked on stage and she took out an ashtray, a cigarette, a lighter, a drink, a glass, and a bag of ice. A Ziploc bag with ice in there. But, I mean, we got hold of a lot of comics from that. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while, they would throw a white comic in there. And it was like the Apollo Comedy Hour. And dudes were, right away were like, oh, shit shit man you put a white <laughs> comic and like you know like i i got jokes about like race and people like somebody said oh be careful when you if you do that because not everybody's gonna you know and i was like but i grew up that way i talk when when i'm telling my jokes i talk like the guy who grew up that way and i'm not gonna stop making a joke just because somebody feels like we were in um the producers club comedy and i was making a joke about um growing up with my friends are mostly Latino, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Colombian, Ecuadorian, Peruvian, Chilean, oh, and also New York Rican, which is Spani- Puerto Ricans who speak Spanish with an English accent or English with a Spanish accent. And this dude went like, he crossed his arms and he's just staring at me. And I was like, oh, you know, when I grew up, and I was like, this is part of the joke. And I said, I, I said, I grew up with mostly Latino. I said, but I also grew up with white friends. And I said, but we didn't stand together in the picture. We stood on other sides because if we stand together, we just look like a gay couple at a Puerto Rican wedding. Everybody laughs except this one fucking dude. He's got his arms crossed and he's like, "It's like whatever." Why you gotta be gay, Bobby? Why you? Why you gotta? Why you gotta? <laughs> no, it said follow it. The two white guys stand together. They look like a gay couple. No, I'm saying, he, but that's what he was. He was like, "What?" what but he was Spanish. He was Latino. He, he was so mad that I. How dare this white guy make race jokes? And I was like, "You think I'm ever oh, gonna wow. stop that joke? That's butter." Yeah, I yeah, go yeah, into yeah. Bronx. And I'm in a fucking comedy club, and I'm like, hey, by the way, am I the only Caucasian in here? Or is this as close as you've been to a white dude that's not a parole officer? <laughs> oh, that's good. I like that one. You that's know what I mean? Callback. And then yeah, I was yeah. like, yo, I got. All, I grew up with New Yorkans. Stop it. I've been to more Puerto Rican day parades than most Puerto Ricans, so <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Oh, you know, because when, when I got into doing comedy, when I wanted to, I was like, I had to tell myself ahead of time, you know somebody's going to get mad, but would you stop doing something if somebody gets mad? And I was like, no, nope. no, why? I, it's a good fucking joke, okay? When you say, where's Waldo? For some reason, you can't find this one fucking white yep. dude with, who's a low, in a red and white striped shirt and black glasses. But I show you a picture of me and my friends, and I say, find the white dude, and you go, 
there, uh, there, uh, and there. And that's it. You know, and that's it. And so I talk, like, I'll pull somebody to the side and tell them a joke just to see how they respond to it. And, you know, like, they'll, like, they'll laugh. And if they laugh, I go, all right, I can do that yeah, somewhere that's, that's else. Yeah, that's the way to fucking do it, man. Anyway, you know so that, that I don't want to talk about me anymore because I just like talking about me. Oh. Um, you're also a host, and you're a very good host at it. The goat of the host. The goat of the host. <laughs> that's what I want to be. The host goat. You're the ghost host. <laughs> yep. The host goat. Okay. The goat of the host, baby. So, <laughs> here, so here you are as a host, right? And then how did you get into that, and how much do you enjoy it? If Oof. you enjoy it. All right, let's uh, let's hit the. No, I'm saying, no I'm time out. <laughs> time out here. Oh man, uh, that um, hosting definitely different. Um, how did I officially get into it? What was there ever a time? What was the first time I ever hosted? Ah, yes, uh, I, I hosted the first time, which was a couple years ago. Uh, we had a test run with one of the shows that I produced. And then we left it alone. We scrapped that idea. And then I linked up with a guy, Alex Starr, and he actually took me underneath his wing, and then he allowed me to host okay. his shows, which I'm always forever grateful. I learned a lot. Uh, we started doing it at Joey Bass Cafe. Then we did uh, Brooklyn uh, House of Comedy, which is a phenomenal place also as well. Then we also did... Um, what else we did? Yeah, he had me host Broadway one time for him also as well. Okay. And then uh, then he put me on shows, which is in Washington, D.C. And then, you know. Oh, nice. In yeah, Washington, too. Washington was good. Now, hosting itself, you know, so shout out to Alex Starr for always putting me on. I appreciate that. But um, when it comes to hosting, it's like, and I'm, I'm going to use that callback that I was going to say earlier. I used to think the worst thing in life was bombing on stage. Right. It's not. You bomb, you get the fuck off. Yeah, you got it's five, really not that bad. It's five minutes, man. If you bomb for five, you're good enough to bomb for five minutes. <laughs> when you see the crowd like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you ever been to a comedy show and, and you saw like a, a, a person, eh, you ever that person going, yeah, yeah. See, as a comic, it's really not that bad. You know, you think you're going to get booed. You're not, nah, people just go. Yeah, nobody boos you. It's at just a comedy quiet. Club, yeah. It's just quiet. Then you get off, you go home. I used to think that that was the worst thing in life. It's not. The worst thing in life as a comic is being a host and bombing on stage. Because <laughs> you're there for a long time. Your long. ass got to get right back up on stage. Yeah, you can't leave. <laughs> so I remember when I was first hosting, I was doing Victor Plikov's show, and it was in front of a bunch of improv teams. It was at uh, Bar None in, Man in Manhattan. And, and it was a bunch of vegan uh, improv, like Williamsburg I, improv teams. I team. fucking love vegans. Uh, yeah, right? There's and so much like, material with vegans. No, but I never did vegan material, so I was doing okay. And then I wanted to, like, you know, test the waters. So I was like, oh, I, I see we got improv teams. There's all improv teams as the audience. So while I'm doing that, <laughs> while I'm performing, I started seeing I was losing them. And I was like, you know what? Let me do a vegan joke. <laughs> so, that, was, so I just, that was the iceberg that I hit the I'm Titanic. I would like to hear your vegan joke. So this is the vegan joke. Okay, tell me. Oh, my God, it was so cringe. Uh, I, I didn't even plan it. I was just like this. I was like, yeah, anyway, shout out to my vegans. Any vegans in here? Everyone's like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm like, vegan. And I said, not me. Then they all went. Oh, boo. And I said, oh, shit. Well, fuck it. <laughs> Guess we're all going down. <laughs> so I don't know where I was like, I was like, you know what? I wanted to be vegan. I wanted to. When I was young, I loved the mixed salad shakers. Remember the McDonald's mixed salad shakers? You pour it in, you shake it up. It was mad fun. You know what I'm saying? The problem is, you gotta be rich to be vegan. If you go to fucking McDonald's right now, they don't even offer salad. Do they still offer salads at McDonald's? They might. I don't, I don't think so. Definitely not. You go to City of Salad, what, 15 bucks to set to the third? You go in fucking McDouble, fucking $3? I'm sorry, but my budget Yeah, says I'm sorry, carnivore. but when you go to McDonald's, you're looking for the, the worst shit you could possibly yeah, man. eat. Not the healthiest thing Nothing. that's on the menu. You just want to like you make account over. You want to make griddle, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I like so. McRib griddle. So I said that joke, and when I said it, and I said, I hate to say it, being a vegan is just like when Kanye West or Ye uh, said, it's like living in New York. You got to be rich just to be poor there. Like you know, when you live in New York, you got to be rich just to be poor here. Yeah. So when you're vegan, you got to be rich to be a vegan. You know what I'm saying? You can't be. 
You can't it's, be broke and be a fucking vegan unless you're eating fucking leaves in fucking Croshawan Park or some shit like that. Yeah, the, you know what I'm saying? The vegan like, in the forest. <laughs> Nuts and berry vegan. <laughs> Like, like, I, I want to be vegan. He's eating leaves in Croshawn Park. I want to be vegan so bad, but my wallet doesn't allow me to. Like, I pull uh, it out. George Washington's like, you better go get that McDouble right yeah. now, motherfucker. No, One dollar <laughs> cheeseburger, my friend. One dollar cheeseburger. So I said that joke, and the crowd just went. And I went, oh, God. And they were just quiet, and I lost them. So I said, all right. Anyway, for the next comedian, and I got off stage, and I, I went up to the, the producer at the time, which was Victor Plekov, and I said, dude, this was horrible, man. I can't get back on stage right now. He goes, you'll be fine. Just get back up. So I was like, all right. Can I get a shot and a double? You know what I'm saying? So I, <laughs> so, so I got fucked up, and I get back on stage. Yeah, when you get drunk, it's all gone. Yeah, so I started <laughs> fucking with the crowd, and I know they hate me. So, you know, in wrestling terms, you could either be a baby face or you could be a heel. So I decided to be a heel, which is a bad guy, but in a positive way. Make him love me by hating positive me. You know what I mean? bad guy. <laughs> yeah. The best oxymoron there is out there. <laughs> so I went on stage and I went, hey, guys, me again. <laughs> and they went, I said, oh, man. Oh. And then I went, listen, look, we're all in this together. But can you guys please stop looking at me like a papa bad? You know, every time there's a next comedian that comes on, you ex this, and you guys how do, do you that, ex this you know son of a bitch out? Yeah. So how then, do you ex him so out? So then they start laughing. And I'm well, like, that's a good, that's a good yeah. line. That's a good so line. So then they start laughing, and and I'm like, all right, I finally won them. I'm like, I got them. They're fucking amazing. And you know what happened afterwards? I said, are you guys ready for more comedy? And you know what they said to me? They looked at me and they went, improv, improv. <laughs> Improv. They shut down my whole shit. They hated me no matter fucking what, man. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it, man. Let's get the improv teams on. And then we went on the improvs. Then they invited me on the fucking stage, man. And as we did that, and it was fucking dope, man. It was great. They made fun of my Tinder profile. <laughs> You had a Tinder profile? Yeah, and is I only still use like side profiles. So is when it I'm still on out it, there? I only use like side profiles. Is it still out there? Can uh, we look it up now? I'm about to deactivate that no, shit. Wait, after it's this not deactivated. <laughs> Can we look up his Tinder profile? No. Yeah, no? <laughs> I mean, we don't have permission no, to look up that. I mean, it's public, so we could actually shit. we could actually look it up, though. No, no, no. But the thing is, is that what I'm basically trying to say is like that. That, that was what I'm trying thing. to say is please don't look up my Tinder yeah, profile. Please, dear God. <laughs> you know, I I hate social media. Dating sites. I can't do it. Oh, anymore. I don't know. No. I can't do it. Anymore. Well, one, because I'm married, so I can't do that. No, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. But, uh, like, like Bumble? Yuck. Garbage. See, I would find it hard because, like, the whole game thing is about talking to people, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, well, at least, you know, the generational. And so if you have a good gift to gab, so, like, you know, comedy and all that stuff, yeah. like, just meeting random people should be easier hitting it off talking to them than... You know, trying to do that, like, texting, typing. Yeah, texting, dating, it's, it's all a scam. It's all a scam. It's all a scam. It's got to be. And, and the reason why I say it's a scam, like... Well, I'll give you an example. If a chick has a number in her name, she's usually somebody looking for a sugar daddy. Yeah. She doesn't give a shit if you're married, if you got kid, or your girlfriend, kids, whatever it is. She's got numbers in her name, she's looking for a sugar daddy. I hate the dating game. If you're married... You ever seen Billy Madison? Yes. Remember when that little fat kid said to Billy, he goes, hey, Billy, I can't wait to go to high school. He goes, don't you say that. And he grabs him by the face. Stay here. Stay as long <laughs> as you can. That's the way I'm going to talk about to gentlemen and women that are married right now. Stay in the married life. Don't get into the dating game nowadays. It's fucking scary out here, man. Every be. girl is dependent on the wallet, and every guy is dependent on the looks. And it's a fucking fucked up situation either way. And then way. social media, it's all that fake looks because yep. there's filters and, and, and everybody's fucked. tons everybody's of makeup. Everybody's fucked. You think, yo, do you know what I said? You know what I heard today? And I haven't played an old school song like that in a very long time. I heard that 50 Cent song, uh, Wangster. Yeah. You know that song. You know what song really I felt offended by? If you want to talk about being offended by music, you know that line where he goes, damn, homie, in high school you were the man, homie. What the fuck happened to you? I felt like he was talking to me. <laughs> I'm being serious. I was like, yo, what the fuck, man? I lost my fucking game. All my, all my DMs are left unread. I, I did Tinder Gold, free trial. Nothing happened. I go outside. Tinder Nothing. gold. Tinder gold. I like that those levels are. You're gold in like your life. Gotta do Tinder. Gotta, gotta go to Tinder gold. <laughs> hey, how's Tinder gold? It's not good. Yeah. And this is the, the, the reason why I'm saying like this, this game is like so fucked up. And this is where I'm trying to say it's like 
I want to be that glitch in the matrix that disturbs everything. Like, 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 like when I say that metaphorically, like if you actually think about it, everybody is like programmed to like live a certain way and they're, they're, they're all accustomed to do certain things. Like women, all they got to do is post a fucking selfie. 30,000 guys hit up their inbox. That's how they get their validation for security. Ooh, 100%. You know what I'm saying? And dudes, it's false. It's false. And That's dudes think that they need to be successful. And then they get more shallow also as well. And then they depend on their wallet to try and impress a girl. So the women's winning. They're winning by... So even if they do fuck, no one's really winning. They're both losing at the end of the day. <laughs> and then that's where it comes to a, a little motherfucker. It's just a motherfuck group of losers. That's yeah. what it is. And then it comes a little motherfucker like me that wants to talk about that in a funny way. And that's well, my that's style what of that's, comedy. That's because it's worth it. You that's know? the kind of stuff that... But that stuff is funny. You know yeah. why? Because everybody tries to tiptoe around it to be like, yeah. instead of saying like, so hey, which who who else has got a Bumble, uh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, profile? And you're like, and people are like, I'm not gonna raise my fucking hand because they're gonna be like, hey, I remember you, you're Sharon six twenty three. Can I ask like, you a question hypothetically? And I want to ask you a question hypothetically. Would you legit be at the dinner table with your family, and you fucked a chick on Bumble or Tinder or? Whatever social media platform, site, dating site. Would you, and they say, how'd you guys meet? Would you legit say we met on Bumble? That's embarrassing if you actually think about it. I think that like, well, I think you have to. I mean, I would if I'm in love. I, I would say that as a joke though. <laughs> Bumble. I wouldn't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think I would care. I think I look, there's a, so, I, I don't know how far I could go back, but there was a point where I just removed all the things that could embarrass me. And it was like, you know, people get embarrassed about dumb shit and small shit. But it was a long time ago I removed anything that I can be embarrassed about. And I was like, that's it. Like, I was telling a story. We were in a, um, a hotel lobby and there was a bar and it was this big glass table. And this girl almost fell in there. And after she tripped and maybe she was drunk or maybe she just fell awkwardly on high heels because she doesn't know how to wear them. Um, she was embarrassed. Like, you could see that she was almost crying and how embarrassed. Embarrassed. Yeah. And I said, man, if I tripped and fell through that fucking glass table, I would lean to the side as long as I didn't cut you <laughs> up, put, lean on my hand, to just let oh, just shit. let him take pictures. It's like, because I'm no longer embarrassed about things. So I may be like the, the, the odd example like that. They, I, no, I wouldn't be embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would actually. Well, thank you. That's inspiration for me then. Yeah, <laughs> like not a badge of honor, but I would wear it like on a t-shirt. Yeah, 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 yeah. I always say that about everything that I think that was like. A, we a, met on Bumble. Yeah, we met on <laughs> Bumble. <laughs> And she would be embarrassed, but I would be like, nah, I don't care. Like, Cheers to that, yeah. man. I'll drink to that one, man. Cheers. 100%. Like, I just awesome. remove. How about you, Mike? Would you be embarrassed? Yeah. I wouldn't even. I'm doing, mm. You're like, eh, You're like nah, how up. did you meet? We didn't meet. I don't even know who she is. <laughs> Get this woman out of here. Yeah. She just, she's a stalker. I don't know what she's going, what's going on. But like, uh, yeah, so like, that's like, so where I'm at now. Uh, I mean, if there's anything else you want to ask. Uh, no, but I mean, yeah, I mean, we got we got stuff to go. It's like, but one of my main questions were leading from uh, growing up, who you are, what made you get into comedy, how you got, even hip hop. So that, like, I, there's a couple of videos you posted. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Like uh, recently, uh, you rapping one of them was, what was really, really good. Thank and, you. Uh, Appreciate that. Yeah. And I was like, I like this you know, between the two of them, like, why do one when you can just keep fucking doing everything, you know? So, so um, to explain the whole comedy rap thing. Um, Which has got to be a gig that you should do. <laughs> I mean, I could make jokes. I could rap. Uh, I could rap jokes, but. It's, eh, man. Ah, man. Uh, like, which one do you want? Do you want both? Because you can do both. I want, I'm going to get both. Okay. And I know it sounds cocky as hell, but whatever. But No, uh, it's confident. But it's, up to, but it's up to me if I get both. Okay. You know, but the comedy is going... So, like, the thing is, is that uh, a mental mind can only handle so much. When you try to do everything at once, you can literally overload yourself. Like, your mind is like a computer. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's wired. It, it's, it's, it's connected to certain things. So, it, it's not about certainly just picking one and saying fuck everything. It's... I'm going to give this my full energy. Then once I'm successful in this, then I'll get right back into music. So I never really quit music. I actually write a verse once a week. Okay. That's good. Once That's a good. week, I write a verse. And 
just so I don't lose it. You know what I mean? That's nice. I battle rap myself in the yeah, shower. Yeah. <laughs> in the shower. And like, sucker, what you want? And like, yo, I just go crazy on me. Yeah. I look in the mirror and I'm like, and it's death. You know, yeah. It was a battle rap waiting. I, I will say one thing. If you, if you want to know why I'm so... I'm very sensitive about the topic of music. I, I really want to get into that. Uh, long story short, like, after the battle raps, after me rapping in school, after... Man, I'll never forget. I was at, uh, you know, the Flushing Projects, the Bland. I, Do I, I know it? So, this is yo, one of the few white was, guys that has hung out in the Bland, my friend. I was over there, and my boy Corey, and he could validate this story. We were sitting down at like a at a party that what's, everybody was what's at. What's Corey's last name? Uh, Corey Rogers. He's one of my best friends, man. Uh, definitely, gentlemen. Shout out to him, man. One of my starting five in life. And I'll never forget. We were sitting there. And he comes up to me, he has a very deep voice. He goes, yo, Steven, man, I ain't gonna lie, man. You gotta fucking rap for these motherfuckers right now. And I was like, I'm not rapping right now. We're all rap, chilling. Rapping or oh, protect your booty. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. Like, so he I was like, like, I gotta rap. No, 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 no. <laughs> he was like, no, no, all jokes aside. So he was, like, he was like, yo, you gotta rap right now, man. And I was like, I'm not doing it. So I don't know where, uh, I guess, like, the alcohol and everything stimulated everybody's ego. So one of the dudes went, oh, you a rapper? All right, battle me right now, bitch. And I'm like... Yeah, I don't want to do this right now. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's fucking fucked up. I was like, all right, all right well, let's split. So he he rapped. And then after he rapped, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I got back at him. And I'll never forget the line that I said. And it was a metaphorical line. I said, uh, he, he talked about video games or some shit like that. Ah, slice your face. Uh, you're an ex like my box. This, that, that. And I was like, you know what? So I said this line to him. I just got pissed off at that moment. It was off the top and everything. What'd you say? Uh, I was like, I don't know. I was like, um, I said, I'm quiet, but you really think I'm playing? It's only been a day and you hating while I'm spraying? You got a gun that shit'll take forever to load like the first PlayStation. Bang! Everyone went crazy. <laughs> cool punchline, right? Yeah. <laughs> so after that, uh, that's when everyone went, everybody was like, Steven, holy shit, this guy's fucking amazing. This out there, and I'm like, thank you. So I was like, you know, I really don't want to battle though. Then after that, two more people came in. Let me get him. Let me get him. Everyone started going <laughs> after me. So I got pissed off again. And then I just snapped. Man, when I snapped, uh, what did I say? I said, uh... <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like. He tried to get me, he tried to get me, and you tried to get me. Nobody got me. So what you guys got for me? It's what? Three of you dudes? Now I'm fucking horny. This went from a rap battle to a fucking rap orgy. That I was like, oh, and I was like, oh, shit, damn. <laughs> well, you got to get six words that rhyme together, and you yeah, just yeah, keep yeah. going, man. And dudes so then like my boy's like, get more sinister, though. Get more sinister. I'm not doing sinister rap. So then the guys are talking about how they're going to shoot me. Boom, 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 boom. So I was like, I, <laughs> The dudes with no guns. Yeah, like, yo, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. I don't have a gun. I never so, loaded so, shit. I don't know what I'm going to So the last line, I'll tell you this. I was like, damn. The last line I said was... uh I'll stick my knife in the back of your head and I'm gonna stick it deeper till it pops out the front and you're like a fucking mystic creature. And I put my hand over your dome, two fingers in your nose. Pull back so fast, forgot the blade was there and I'm slit with holes. I'm gonna take you whack MCs to schooling. Battle me, you're fooling. I'm a river apple who spits. You motherfuckers just be drooling. When I met your girl, she's a sinner and a flirt. I lifted up her skirt, my dick in her hurt. So she got tied and died like a fucking hippie shirt. Mm. <laughs> See that sinister rap <laughs> Holy shit Did you like it? <laughs> I did And especially the part at the end Where you molested his girlfriend <laughs> Yeah <laughs> she was like, it's like, uh, He was probably like um, Metaphorically No, was that? no they, but they pissed me off Did so they fight him? Yeah they were like um, hey, the elevator is yeah, working right now, was, so take that, it down real quick. Don't take the stairs. But, Don't take the stairs yeah. in the projects. Don't take the stairs. But that was, you know what happens in the stairs in the projects? Piss. <laughs> Piss, drugs, and robbery. Uh, usually people that aren't from Sounds the Sounds like a lot of R. Kelly's ex-girlfriends. A lot of slip and falls. <laughs> yeah, a lot of slip and falls. It's like, so oh, what happened? Shit. I fell down the stairs and they took my money out of my pocket. Yeah. It's a lot of stick-ups in the staircases of, um, of the projects. Which is funny because one of my closest friends through high school... He was from the Bland, and uh, I, when I go over to his house, I'd have to go there, and every once in a while, like dudes would just pop out of fucking nowhere. You, you didn't yeah, see yeah. him in front of you. The minute you look away, and all of a sudden they would pop up. 
But there was always a one dude like, no, 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 he's good, he's good. And you go in there and I would like, take the elevator. And there are stories, stories mm -hmm. about people that take the elevator that weren't, that didn't live in the projects and they got stuck up. And I've been in there many times and I never got stuck. And I never thought bold, like I was too tough for it. But I was like, it never happened. Yeah. I was just like, because there was enough people in there that I knew that I was friendly with from uh, rapping on the corner, drinking 40s in the park, playing basketball, went yeah. to school with, at a random party in the neighborhood that they were just like, I was just that guy that everybody got along with, everybody liked, mm -hmm. you know? So if it was the element of basketball, it was like, oh, we're gonna play basketball. It was the element of rapping, it was like, get the white guy, bring the white guy over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which at first they didn't know I was white, and then when I told them I was white, they were like, because we were just hanging around with enough Spanish people, you, no, like, no, no, no. you looked at with the Caesar, yeah, the yeah. line part, and everything like that. Anyway, and... Uh, well, I could understand that, but it was like this when you bring it up to Bland, it's one of those funny Oh, yeah, I love the Bland, though. No, no, so. Which is funny apparently, because I was there. So apparently they all agreed that I won that rap battle competition, which was amazing. Sounds like from the snippets of it that you might have come out in the lead. Did you make a run for it? Did you stay at that moment? Uh, so when that moment that hit me, uh, <laughs> I really don't like battle <laughs> rapping. I'll be honest with you. If I got to do it, I'll do it. But uh, I'll be honest with you, I didn't like it because it was like. Like it was cool for the sport and to say like like in an artistic sense like 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 me rapping some sinister shit. It's not like some evil tendencies and like that, but it's like like how can I say some Quentin Tarantino shit? You know what yeah, I'm but saying? Yeah, like dudes are talking like, about raping your sister and you're like you get that close and they're spitting on you in that yeah yeah dirty yeah, yeah. COVID you saliva. You gotta bring that and negative. you want to punch him in the yeah. mouth. The last thing you don't want to so, you don't want like it's like, very um, sinister in rap battle. You're like, like and that's why I don't enjoy it anymore. Just you know what I'm saying? Punch him that's in why the I, neck. Yeah. And that's why that last one that I did was my last rap battle ever, and it, it was well, that's great. good because battles suck. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's but that's too not, much. It's too much of like there's let rapping me, let me, and then there's hip hop, right? Yeah. Hip hop is different. Like hip hop is not, it's not battle rap. You know what's a real rap battle? The verses. If you want a rap battle, drop your hits. Drop your hits while they drop their hits, and then they figure yeah. out who's the Yo, better artist. Listen. But to like size a man up, like that's why even though I did it, even though I said some crazy dope ass punchlines and shit like that that were very dark and sinister, I I, I wouldn't want to do it again because I don't want to bring another man down, you know, at my expense to bring myself up. And, yeah, and I, I didn't I, like it's it. It's cheesy because it also instigates the, the dude that gets so frustrated. You ever watch those battle rap videos? Yeah. You see a dude get so frustrated that he lost, and he just the only thing he has left is it's the to ego. fucking and take a swing, and his yeah. crew jumps his in. Ego. That's all that's left yeah. is his ego. And I was watching a video, and they were talking to um, Everlast because he had uh, some beef with um, Eminem. Two white dudes. I remember that beef. Yeah. It was dumb, but they were both pretty good. Eminem was harder, but... And he was talking about battle. The guy was like talking about battle rap. He goes, man, he goes, I couldn't do that. Your guy's in front of your face, spitting in your face, talking about doing this shit to your family it's, and that. And like yeah, and breaking it's too much He goes, the first thing you want to do is some punch somebody in the mouth. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, But that's what I would want to do. Like, because you, what you said, you deserve to get punched in the mouth. And I was like, yeah. like the regular, we did, we, we did the cypher. Like when we rapped, we did a cypher. You went first, somebody made a beat. And you just kept going around and around. And you just came up with something new every single time. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while now, like through the last 20 years, like I practice, I find a beat, I like it, I repeat it. And I just practice that shit in my head and go, you know, I don't prepare myself for like all of a sudden at 50, be like, yo, he's got, he's 50 and he's coming out for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Because white rappers are a dime a dozen right now. You know, when I, when, I, when I was thinking about it and even had the opportunity to do it, they weren't a dime a dozen. Who's like your, um... All time top, favorite top three. Top three. This Dead or alive. Not the best. Your top three artists. So that if you I like listen. as a lyricist, man, I just love everything that that Rakim does. Uh, Rakim is great, but as a tie, as the greatest storyteller, Slick Rick is the greatest storyteller that existed in life. And I love his voice too. You know, even when he even his later stuff that wasn't good and then he got him better, mm -hmm. he has like twenty songs that when you listen to it, it's a fucking story. It's a movie by itself. You know You don't yeah. gotta see the music video. You don't you have see, to. You could see You could like legit visualize it just by his artistic Dude, expression. I was his having vocals. a conversation so with somebody. It was like I wanted to do a limited series. <laughs> Off of his raps, mm -hmm. like a, like storylines, like real story out of his, because that's how good his storytelling was. Now the the uh, the best rappers ever, I don't know is like because not the I, best, your favorite. Like I could listen to everything that Method Man does. See a lot of people that when I ask every single thing, but Method Man, I every awesome. single thing that he does, I could. And listen he has to. a golden voice also as well. 
like and like a very distinguished voice that when you when you hear it you know it's him. But the last five years, the last five years of him, he's so much better than the first 10, 15 years of him. Cause now, like if you ever watch that documentary where he does that whole thing of when they're sitting in the chairs about skeet it up and like I had like diabetes and he does that whole shit like and you get me and it was like watching it and I was like trying to like figure out what he was trying to say there because I was like I turn it off and like catch it like what would you do if I had it and I was like you know like if I was battling him at that moment and he was just so good at that like what he was in the beginning to what he is now is two different things but evolution like comics and and actors and it was like he's not one but he's one of Mm. The top three that I would I could ever listen to. Method Man. Method Man is that's so dope. You know you don't you don't usually hear that, and it's very refreshing. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, like when people like usually uh, like speak on uh, artists and artistry, like you'll either get Biggie or Pac like right away. Like me, it's Pac. You know what I'm saying? Because, well, because they're iconic. That's, really, that's what I grew up. They're on. iconic. Though. If you like, want to talk about someone that's like doesn't get mentioned like that, I gotta be honest. I'm gonna get a lot of heat for this. One of my favorite artists of all time is Mace. Ah, I'm sorry. Man, I don't. It's not. I'm not, I'm not even arguing that. What the point is, what's funny is, he I think was, Harlem was a fucking classic album, man. Yes, but classic album. And, okay, and so, Welcome Back was very good too. It's yeah, a Christian yeah. album, but it was. Yeah. Very, I mean, you guys have your opinions, but look, he wrote. He. I would wrote, like to hear his opinion on that. He wrote a lot lean, of stuff. I, I, I lean towards. I've always leaned toward, towards Big. Big, you know, awesome, awesome. Because Big falls under the slick Rick, ca- uh, the slick Rick Category. section Look. of storytelling. storytelling, and that you 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 didn't even you can visualize you what he's talking about. What he's saying, yeah, you couldn't wait to to him to put out that music video because you already got wow. that vision in, in yeah. your head. My favorite joint from from Big is I got a story to tell. Listen up, I got because a story to tell. If, if, da, na, na. You know, if if he didn't, if he would have dropped that shit, that video would have been. Oh uh, my you know. god! But you know what? I think it's even better that he didn't drop it because it's just a visualization for your imagination. Like uh, like Nas's song "Rewind," you know that song "Rewind" and everything like that. Yeah. Like you actually visualize it in your own. Like sometimes I feel like uh, music videos could either make the song better or make the song worse. Yeah. Like like that one twelve song, uh, "Only You." I can't hear that song without picturing the music video. When they're dancing around? In Times Square. Yeah. Like, that is an iconic fucking video. You know what I'm saying? And then you got videos that have nothing to do with the music. Uh, with the music. Yeah, I, well, I, I think that, like, um, like rappers-wise, like 50 Cent, like, because it's he's he's got these iconic songs and iconic albums. Mm-hmm. What do you think of, is 50's best album? Mm. I don't know. I don't like, <laughs> it's hard because like why oh, after a certain time in history when we didn't have to buy the whole album to listen to the music that is very true and that's what I, st- I don't I haven't I haven't do you want to hear like the last album I bought and I'm saying I don't like the whole thing or do like the whole thing is Donda right I'm not saying that I like the whole thing I bought the whole thing did you like it I wanted to take a shot at it and so did you get the deluxe yeah so <laughs> okay I did, and all I have to say is two of the songs that I have on repeat, which are small songs, are Jail. Uh, part one and part two? Yeah. And did, I, you heard, I can't you heard help. Marilyn Manson's ad-libs on the second yeah, one. Yeah, and I can't help, but every time it plays, I turn it up louder. Danda. Danda. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm in it. like that. Uh, the rest of it is like it's hit or miss. Like Each yeah. song is hit or miss, and so I don't regret buying it. But it is not something that like that's what I like about music now is that even there are songs that I forget that I like mm-hmm. I'll go back to whether a '90s or two. So what did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? In all honesty, um, see, it's the, it's that it's that synthetic like auto tune stuff. Like some of it is good, man. Some of it's so good. But- Jesus is a good. Oh, with song. the locks and stuff and yeah. uh, Jay Electronica. That's yeah. a good <laughs> song. And then there's another one or two I can't think of the names right now. Was like, but I like it when it pops up. Can you hum it? Maybe. Uh, uh. I'd have to go like dig through the songs and be like, oh, that's the name of it. Do you like, like the one that goes like, uh, we off the grid, grid, grid? This one, my kid, yeah, yeah, kid, yeah. kid. I okay, I'm fifty. It's a little 50, too poppy. 50, 50, 50, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think like I think that like I think he's good in a way. And I also watched an interview with him after it. The one with Noriega. Yeah, that shit was so, wild, man. <laughs> it was, you saw that one too. 
It was uh, so if you yeah, get I'm a chance, I'm gonna send you a link to that one, man. <laughs> look at Noriega does that because they do like a, that. They got him smoking weed and they got smoking weed and, and drinking, and, and the whole thing is about to interviewing interviewing you, and they get wasted. And I'm talking about. Oh no no no! I did. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you, I did. And, and he's got, and yo, he's so like Holy deep shit. and dark and like up and down and all over the place. Yeah. And when he was like, what did he say? He goes, when they call me a rapper, they call me the fun. N-word. And I was like, no, no, that's not that, that's not it. And he kept going. He was like, that's how I feel. But that's okay. That's that's your feeling. I think the thing about it, and this is one thing I learned from from what something that Joe Rogan said and something that I forgot who the other rapper is that said about Kanye, Yeezy, Yee, whatever you want to call him. It's that he is a fucking hidden Jesus. Uh, like, genius Jesus. Yeah. Like, he... I agree. He, people will do what he says. If Kanye went out and didn't curse, and all of it be just only spiritual, he created a church with music, and people were like, now I'm religious. Yeah. They weren't religious before. They were religious now. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think that that is very Jesus-like, yeah. then you don't understand it. But... Wow, awesome. Didn't you, like, he's creative... He's got from not all his clothes on his work, but from clothes, he's he's an architectural manage uh, degree <laughs> master. He's fucking building shit and cars and houses. He's got degrees and shit yep. that people don't even know. Even though he did drop out, he went back later to get a degree in other stuff. He designed sneakers. Mm -hmm. Whether you like them or not, it's the same thing as about modern day rap. That trap shit, that same shit. Every album you listen to, his is... They're biting off of him, but trying to, and so some of it's the same. So it's hard for hip hop yeah. heads, old school hip hop heads, to appreciate stuff that he does and that the rest of the world. Does. Do you feel like he's too ahead of his time? I don't know if it's future shit. I mean, I think it's just because the thing is that I'm saying, like, like anybody that's listening that let's say right now that doesn't know rap or listening yeah, yeah, to yeah, rap yeah. would be like, the confusion is that like they hear um, Kanye West Cheers, and bro. then they have. The songs that they remember, you mm -hmm. know, and then there were songs by him that I like that people don't like, you know, the one where, what does he say? Oh, what's, what's it? Um, 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 is give it up for the douchebags and the assholes. Sabotage for, for the, the douchebags and the assholes. Assholes. Everyone that I know. Like that, like people like, oh, that's just, that, that's. When that song came out, I remember I was on Bell he Boulevard. He performed it in the, uh, on the award show. Yeah, the first. runaway show. And that was right after he took oh. the, uh, the, uh, the uh, he, when he snatched the mic from fucking Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. <laughs> See, Wait, that which made, I think. That angered people. Yeah. But, you know? but if a lot of people don't realize the only excuse that I could vouch for Ye when he took the fucking mic from Taylor Swift was the red carpet pictures. Because if you look closely while he's next to Amber Rose, there's a full fucking Hennessy fifth. Yeah. And he's grabbing it. He drank a whole bottle of Hennessy. It was halfway done by the time he was there. Yeah. If anybody here ever drank Hennessy, you're not in the right state of mind. If I was a celebrity and I was a friend of Taylor Swift, Am I, right or like, wrong? I would have been so Thank I would have been <laughs> mad. I would have been mad when he did that. You know, like I would have been like I would have taken it personal because there's somebody else out there who got an award and the time for them to yeah. just give a speech and you're up there and like no district like even Beyonce was like, yeah, uh, yeah. trust me, I don't want to um Do you have a favorite Yay album? Mm. Me? Yeah. I like Yay, but I don't. Do you I like a favorite sneakers, Yay that's album? It. I, I like a sneakers, that's it. College Dropout, uh, Late Registration. Some of them. My Dark Beautiful Jeez. Twisted Fantasy. None. Okay. All right. Well, teachers on. Nah, I, 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 I like. I, I guess it's like Mike. Like Mike said. I mean, if I like a, if I like a track, I like a track. I don't. Yeah, yeah. But that's the beautiful thing about mm -hmm. art. You're allowed to not like something. If I find something beautiful that you don't find, and you find something beautiful, then we could learn from it. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, you could go for a whole collection of tracks, but they'll be from a whole, you know, different exactly. slew of albums. Well, I, I want to explain something now. So, like, just to get the nail out of the, uh, uh, the, the, the address, the, not the elephant in the room, but whatever. Just to say something just like... Just a pin a, in the wheel? A like hidden a, gem, a hidden gem. Like a, a light in the sky? So, the real reason why I don't do music, and I'm not pursuing it anymore right now, is because... In 2013, I'll make this as short as possible. So in 2013, well, late 2012, 
Um, my music started popping off. I started producing. I started rapping. I started doing everything at the time before I even decided to even get into comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was dating a woman at the time. I lost my job. I lost everything. And then I, I'll never forget. It was like sometime in October, and I was just lost that day. I was walking around Soho, and I was really lost. And I went by Eminem's label, which is Shady Records, which is on One Five One Lafayette. They don't exist no more over there. That's the only reason why I'm mentioning the address. And what I did was when I was 16 years old, I had a demo. But before I had the demo, I remember, like, you know when you're like trying, I, I know I'm like all over the place. Let me just organize my thoughts real quick. So, do it. Dabble, do it. Zabby, do it. Zabby, do it. Zabby, you zabby, do. Zabby, zabby, zabby. And I was like, rewind. No, but anyway, like I was saying was like, when I was young and I was 16 years old and I knew I could rap after the rap battles, after everything I was doing, when I was hustling, when I was doing that, and everyone was like, yo, Steven, you're going to fucking make it. Energy. That's my rap name, Energy. So I was like, damn, I fucking got it. So I grew my hair out and I went for a job interview at Virgin Records. Remember Virgin Records? Yeah. So after I dropped off my application, I'm wearing a tuxedo. I sit down right in front of the location, which was known as Shady Records. And I sat down there in the corner and I was waiting for a guy named Riggs Morales to pop up. And as soon as I was sitting down there and I was waiting there, I waited for three hours, three hours. I had a Psychic 1 at the fucking time, man. The Psychic 3 was already out, but I had the Psychic 1. So he comes out and he goes, hey, what's up, man? I heard you were waiting here. And I said, hey, nice to meet you. He goes, what do you do? I said, I read in an interview. My name's Energy. And I said, and I read in an interview that if you actually believe in somebody, you don't care if you got to go to their crib at three in the morning, hear him rap. I want to rap for you. And he goes, it doesn't work like that. And I went, what? Somebody gave you the wrong information. So he goes like this. He goes, it's your conscience. No, it was legit in an interview. So I was like, he, he was like the VP of fucking Shady Records. So I was like, what can I do to show you that I'm good for this? And then you know what he said to me? He said, can you get a demo tomorrow? I said, hell yeah. I never made a demo in my life. I just said, yeah, I could do it. I was like, yes, I can, Riggs. He goes, all right, make a demo. This is my man House. His name was House. He was the bouncer of the fucking Shady Records. He goes, he'll take the demo for you. I was like, all right, cool. Can you get a demo tomorrow? I said, yeah, whatever. So I call up Mixerhead, which is right around here in Whitestone, and I asked him how much for three hour, for the whole night. He charged me a very good price, 150 for the whole night. I was just rapping over Eminem beats. I never rapped over an official beat. I never rapped over my own instrument. This is like when I first started doing it. So I call my dad, because remember, I was unemployed. And I said, dad, he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, I have an opportunity with Shady Records. Can you please give me 150 bucks so I can, you know, record my demo? He goes, what? Eminem? I'll give you it. Right, right, he right, goes, right. I got to go with you tomorrow because I don't fucking believe you. I'll right. give you the money, but Once I got to go yeah, tomorrow. I get, I'm going to hand it over I, when everything yeah, looks legit. I stayed up till 7 in the morning fucking recording in fucking Mix Ahead Studios. We fucking did it. We came back. And out of nowhere, the guy comes down. CD players were still relevant at the time. I pop it open. I'm fucking 16 years old. I pop it open. This is right after the Brenda story. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> so I pop it open and I give it to him. And I'm like, here, here's my demo. And he goes, you don't got a case or contact information? I said, no, 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 it's just my demo. I didn't know nothing. Yeah, you got to write the information. I didn't write nothing. No. I just gave him a blank fucking CD. Could be anybody. Took the words, gave it to someone else. <laughs> right? So he says to me, he goes, I'll take this. But all I got to tell you. Soldier Boy's making it right now. This was like late 06, 07. So I was like, yeah, I know. And then he goes, if case you don't hear back from us, don't let it discourage you. So that was when I was 16. Fast forward time, 2013, end of 2012. So around that time frame, I go back to Shady Records because I came cool with Paul Rosenberg. I rap for him at some event that we were at. And when I rap for him, it was right by SNL. He goes, yo, you're good. And I was like, yo, can I give you my demo? And I gave him, uh, what do you call it? I gave him... Uh, a USB flash drive. So I get over there, and in 2012, I'm sitting in the front, present time at that moment, and I thought I saw Paul Rosenberg coming outside, and it wasn't him. So I was very depressed that time. At that moment in my life, it I was, was another Jew. Yeah. I, I, yeah, 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 Paul <laughs> Rosenberg. Man. Not Peter Rosenberg, Paul Rosenberg. Uh, so Johnny Rosenberg. Yeah, Johnny Summer Rosenberg. Rosenberg. <laughs> So what happened was after that, I, I like, I'm like, yo, Paul, Paul, Paul. But it was just a, another tour of fucking white dudes. I was like, all right, whatever. So he gets in the fucking car. He speeds off. And at that moment in 2012, end of it, I was unemployed. I was depressed. Me and my ex at that time, we weren't working out. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. So after that, what happened was is I was like, you know what? 
I just sat in front of a random hotel. So as soon as I sit in front of that random hotel, I swear to God, I got my headphones on, I'm just bumping music. This old lady comes up to me and she goes, sir, are you a fan of hip hop? And I went, yeah. She goes, I like your headphones. I say, she goes, I don't want to be weird, but this guy named Kanye West is in this building. There's a little old lady. And I was like, Kanye's in this building that I'm sitting in front of right now? She goes, yeah. I said, get the fuck out of here. I swear to God. So I see this woman selling clothes right outside. You know, those street vendors and shit like that. So I go up to her and I'm like, is Kanye in the building right now? She goes, who told you? And I was like, I, 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 I stick around and you'll meet him. I was like, okay. So he finally comes out. My heart is like, it's my fucking idol. Comes out. The first thing he does is grill me like this. I'm like, yo. I didn't know what else to do. He starts looking at me, he smiles a little bit. He goes, what up? So as soon as he gives me the peace sign, he starts walking away. I said, yay. I just wanted to do this myself. My name is Steven Peter Panther. He goes, he's listening to me. Fans bum rush him. They recognize them in Soho, in front of the Mercer Hotel. That's where we were in front of. Can I get an autograph? Can I get this out there? And he goes, oh, hell no. Dog, I'm walking. Can I walk? Can I fucking walk, man? Well, you guys want autographs? I'll yeah, give you guys he, autographs. He talks like that shit to everybody, though. Yeah, but, then, <laughs> that, but I, under, I felt it. It's annoying after a while. So the kids are like, yeah, yeah, just it. Like they're shoving in his face. He goes, here, here, here. Have a good one. Have a good one. He's walking away, and he's walking around the corner. So I was like, shit, I got to talk to this guy real quick. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get my opportunity. I got interrupted by these fans. So I run around the block with this paparazzi guy, and then I know where fucking Pascal, which was Kanye West's... Uh, uh, bodyguard at the time stops us. He goes, "You two get closer, I'll break your fucking legs." And I went, "No, no, no! I, I, I gotta talk to him real quick, man." So, transpire that two weeks later, I fucking someone randomly said, "I heard you were trying to meet Yay," and I'm like, "I am. Why? Get a demo ready. I'll text you his address." I said, "Get the fuck out of here. That's not his address." So I just went there randomly, not like on some stalker shit, you know what I mean? And I was just like, yo, fuck it. So I made a demo on a Lamborghini USB flash drive. Sure. It was a Lamborghini USB flash drive. I found a staple. And in that, I put three folders. I put my production, I put my music, and I put my biography with a headshot. And you got it to him. So I go in front of the location that the guy sent me, which is right around the block from where I met him at that hotel. So I'm standing out there, and out of nowhere, it's 9 in the morning. I'm like, this motherfucker is in here, man. I was like, I got to get the fuck out of here. What, what am I doing here? I look stupid right now. I'm with a toy car in front. You know what I mean? So I'm sitting there. Ten minutes later, I'm like, I'm out. As soon as I'm ready to leave, it's nine in the morning. Maybach pulls up. And I went, get the fuck it's out of here. There we go. So I don't know where he wasn't in the Maybach. I'd look inside. <laughs> He's coming out of the place that the guy told me to. Whoever that gentleman was that gave me that information. There he is coming out. Yay comes out. So, so do like, you give it to him? So Yay comes out. And I didn't see him for two weeks So until that last time. And I went... My heart's racing again. I'm like, why the fuck is my heart doing this shit? So he just grills me. And I'm like, yo. I gave him another peace sign. He went, what up? And I went, what up? So after that, he starts walking. He goes, you good? I'm like, yeah. Can we take a picture real quick? So we took the picture. And I said, yay. Uh, Mr. West. He goes, yeah, what's up? And I went, can I talk to you for a second? And he went, okay. I said, yeah. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he walks with me. He goes, come on. I'm walking with fucking Yay Kanye around Soho this at is nine what o'clock he wanted in the morning. To do. He wanted to take nine a walk with Kanye in the morning. And he got it. That's nine beautiful. in the morning. So that's the beautiful. first thing I did is I marked the fuck out. I'm like, yo, I just want to tell you I'm a huge fan. This that to the third. And he's like, thank you, I appreciate it, man. And he's like, like just whatever you do. Don't so he goes, what do you want me right to do there? for you? I said, the way Big Sean got signed was he rap for you. I don't want to do it that way. I'm a little different. He goes, well, what do you what do you want to do for me? And I went, I got this for you. So I reach in my pocket and he backs up. And his bodyguard gets in front of me. I'm like, no, no, no. Give me a second. John I'm Lennon moment stuff. all over again. Sorry right? to hear it. <laughs> it's that motherfucker. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. No, 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 no. God forgive me for that. No, Sorry. No, no. All God, jokes aside. God all forgive me for that joke. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Yeah, to John Lennon. To John Lennon. Yeah. Thank you for everything. No, but like, so I pull out the Lamborghini USB flash drive. And he goes, what the fuck are you giving me a toy car for? And I'm like, no, no, no. It's not a toy car. It's actually my demo. He goes, this is your demo? I said, yeah. Like Lamborghini Mercy, your bitch is so thirsty. I was like, yo, plug it in. Three folders come up. My demo, uh, my production, and my biography. And he went, he starts grabbing. He looks at it. He goes, yo, this is dope. He goes, I said, yeah, take it. That's my gift to you. He goes, I can't accept this. I said, why can't you accept it? That's my gift to you. And then he said, you know how many times I get sued, dog, and I try to accept demos? This is not the way to do it. Like, this is phenomenal. This is great. But if I take this right now, it's a risk. I don't know you like that. 
you're a cool dude, but you I can, can give you the right person to give it to. Yeah, so he recommended a guy named Shea Pope. So I tried giving it to Shea Pope. Long story short, Shea Pope never really listened to my demo. Yeah. And I used to argue with him. Like, I even yelled at him one time. I DM'd him. I said, yo, dog. Like, I even had his iMessage. And when I iMessaged him, I said, yo, dog, did you listen to it? It's been four months already. I'm getting frustrated. He goes, I don't appreciate you coming at me like that. I said, look, I'm, I'm sorry, but you're preventing me from changing the world right now. As cocky as it uh, sounds. We gotta wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. So before we wrap it up, I told Shane <laughs> Pope. I said, yo, you can't listen to my demo? And he goes, I can't. I said, I'm with my wife right now. I said, do you take shits? He goes, don't ever disrespect me in my life. I said, no, do you take shits? He goes, why the fuck are you asking me if I take shits? I said, next time you take a shit, here's my SoundCloud link. Listen to my demo. <laughs> and Some, that was it. That was something it. to help you get over yeah, your, yeah, yeah. your dumping moment yeah, yeah, yeah. would be this. So, all right. This is it. This is our time. The show is I know over I, and done. I, I could talk to you guys for nine hours. I appreciate you guys for yeah. having me. That's my music story. The comedy story will be next time, and that's well, for another time. Uh, if there yeah, is another so, time. Yeah, there'll be another time. So uh, before we go, uh, one of the things I want to talk about, if you are, have, you have a friend or a family member that likes jewelry, silver jewelry, uh, like we have this the cracked ring or the skull bracelet. Looks dope. Um, I had a, a friend named Killer that loves shit like that. Oh, yeah, I know Killer. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> un Undaunted.com. You go out there, they've got rings, they've got bracelets, necklaces, watches. They got a lot of skull stuff, different designs. Uh, see if you like, put in the Mike and Sean Show 2.0, get 20% off coup coupon. You know, I mean, solid gold there. Uh, Steven, Steven Pantelitis, do you have anything coming up soon? Anything, any comedy yes. shows? Yes. So we got a phenomenal show at Patsy's Pizzeria. I got Jacob Williams from Wildin' Out. I got uh, Nate Orton, which is a phenomenal comedian. Nate also Orton, the brother. very good. I love brother Nate Orton. of Randy Orton. Randy I know he hates Orton. that, but that's the way I. That's all right. It. He is. <laughs> uh, you're legit. He's a good comic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I got uh, Alex Carabano from HBO Max. I got um, Lee Paul. He has a credit on Amazon. I also got Joe Pantillo. He's also on Amazon. And this is next. Saturday, December 11th at 7 p.m. at Patsy's Pizzeria Patsy's in White Pizzeria. Stone, right on Utopia Parkway. It's only $10 for the cover charge. You go in, pay whatever the fuck you want. So we have two options. You go in, you pay the $10, or right after that, if you want a dinner, you get a dinner, prefix menu, so you get three courses, you get a free drink, and you also get to enjoy the show for 45 nice. Totally optional. Look at that. Totally optional. Look at totally that. optional. Totally optional. December 12th, I'm going to be at the Greenwich Comedy Club, yep. 930 show. That's me. This is comedy. This is the end of today's show. Good night, motherfuckers. And one more word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Yeah Brothers. Yeah. The Yeah Brothers. That's it. Hashtag Appreciate Yeah it, Brothers. Appreciate it, Mike. Thank you for having the Steve, no, man. My thank pleasure. You, man. My pleasure. Very. I uh, Thank you. I appreciate it. And that's it. us. <laughs> that's all. That's now it. This was a shit show. <laughs> now